Hey guys, welcome to my course. My name is Ido and I am the founder of Sideborn. In today's course, I'm going to teach you how to build a beautiful and a professional WordPress website. In the past, building a website was a hard and complicated process. It took a lot of time and you needed to have a capital in order to build a website. I'm here to show you that today, that's not the case anymore. You can build a beautiful and a professional website quick, easy, without any big investment. If you're gonna start this course right now, in few hours, you will have a beautiful and a professional WordPress website that you can be proud of. Let me take you to the computer really quick and show you what we are going to build in this course. Now, let me show you really quick from top to bottom what we are building, what we are going to achieve in this course. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of business you have. This course, put your business in mind. This website that we will build will fit any kind of business in any industry because we will use all the sections that every business needs. Therefore, this is the ultimate WordPress website. It will take you deep into WordPress and will show you exactly what you need to build and also how to build it so it will fit your business best. We will learn how to create a logo for your business if you don't already have one. We're also going to create this menu on the right with a nice hover effect. Then we will create our hero section, which is the top section before scrolling down with a nice title and a call to action button to encourage your visitors to act upon arriving your website. Then we will create our bullet point section, which is very important section where we can list all of our benefits, all of our features and pros and why your customers should hire or buy the service from us. Then we will move on to the next section, which is the image gallery section. And this is a great section to display your art, your work, your business, your facilities, and stuff like that related to your business. And I used it in this course in order to build our brand recognition to show logos of brands that we collaborated with. So we're also going to learn how to do that in this course. And the next section going to be the testimonial section. And look how beautiful this section is. It's not just a regular testimonial section. It's a slider testimonial section. And this section is amazing because it's going to draw the visitor's attentions. And that will build the positivity of your brand because it will kind of force your visitors to read the testimonials and develop positive opinion about your brand. The next section, the FAQ frequently asked questions, is a nice section as well because we created the question in a toggle manner that will spark the curiosity of your customers and your visitors and they will need to engage with the question in order to read the answer. The next section is also a very important section for every website and business. We will display your physical location if you have one. We don't have to, of course. And we're also going to create a contact form to create communication channel between your customers and yourself. So if any of the customers will have a question regarding your service or your product, they will be able to contact you and ask you the question. And the next section is hands down one of the most important sections of any business and any website. There aren't any other courses out there that will teach you how to collect leads and emails from your visitors. And that's why many websites eventually close after a short period of time. This is a crucial aspect of every business and this course will teach you exactly how to collect emails from your visitors so you can keep communicating with them even after they left your website. We're also going to learn how to build this beautiful About Us page with nice animation. As you can see, we have images of the coaches with show description next to the image. Of course, you can use this page to show your business or to show and introduce your business employers. If you're thinking of running a blog in your website, I highly encourage that. And we're also going to learn in this course how to create a nice and beautiful archive page in order to display your posts. We are also going to learn how to create a beautiful template for each of your blog posts. Of course, this is a professional template. As you can see, we have the featured image as the background image at the top of this blog post. When scrolling down, you can see the content on the left and a sidebar on the right. At the bottom of the post, we'll have an auto box with a short description regarding the author of this post, along with share buttons and the option to leave comments by your visitors. Of course, the website that we will build 
also going to be responsive and mobile friendly. That means that it will look good on every screen size, whether your visitors are coming from iPhone, Android, or any other smartphone, whether they are using a tablet, laptop, computer, desktop, iMac, it doesn't really matter. Your website will change and adjust according to the screen size and will look perfect on each and every one of them. This course is packed with full stuff and great stuff and some of the other things that we will learn it's how to get a domain name, register with a hosting company, how to create an email account with your own domain name such as support at your domain name.com, how to install an SSL certificate in order to have the option to accept payments from your visitors, of course how to install WordPress themes, child themes, we're gonna talk about plugins, pages versus blog posts, etc. This course contains sections that you cannot find in any other course. I dedicated a full section to show you how to optimize your website, how to connect it to Google Analytics and Google Search Console and get insights what we need to do in order to improve our search and our ranking on Google. We're going to talk about how to test our website speed and of course how to improve it because Google already indicated that speed is one of the most important factors in the ranking algorithm. And of course, I have a dedicated section to show you how to collect emails and leads from your visitors in order to keep the communication with them after they left your website. That is another must-have section that no other course will teach you how to do because they don't know. This is just the tip of the iceberg, of course, guys. Take this course, there are many more things to learn in this course and I highly recommend you to start moving your business and your life forward with this course. So who can benefit and use this course? Pretty much anybody, any brick and mortar physical business or online business can use this course in order to create the perfect website for their business. For example, gyms, spas, YouTubers, bars, coffee shops, restaurants, beauty salons, barbers, photographers, private tutors, gardeners, real estate agents, and literally any other business that needs a website. This is just a short list. Any business can use this course in order to create professional website for itself. The website I just showed you, it's very easy and simple to make. Everything was created with a drag and drop builder and you don't need to know even one single line of code. It doesn't even matter if you are a beginner or advanced WordPress user. This ultimate WordPress course will teach you everything that you need to know about WordPress. The website that you will learn how to build in this course will help you to get closer to your financial goals and to take your business to the next step. So guys, wait no more. Enroll into this course right now start to build your website at this moment and I will see you on the other side. So guys, in order to be successful and get the most out of this course, I created a beautiful booklet for you packed with great tips and amazing resources and I would like you to download it. It's completely free. Let's go to siteborn.com forward slash resources. Excellent. Over here, just click on the download now button and it will take you to my OneDrive account and the download will start automatically, as you can see at the bottom left corner of the screen. Great. After the download has been completed, we can see it in our download folder. Let's open the PDF really quick and see what we are dealing with. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see the whole picture. And immediately we can see that the booklet is very nice, packed with great materials, packed with golden nuggets. I really highly recommend you guys to use it. And the first thing that I want you to do is go to the first page and download the images that we are going to use during this course. Okay, so click on the download. It will take you to my OneDrive account and the download will start immediately, completely free. Wait for the download to be completed. And after you did, you can find it in your downloads folder. And all you need to do is just to unzip the file and you will have all the images that we are going to use in this course. And the last thing I want you to do, guys, is go to facebook.com forward slash sideborn and like the page I created specifically for this course. You can PM me directly in this group and also you can talk to other fellow students who's taking the course together with you. All right, so definitely uh, go to this page and like it. 
All right, now that we have this out of the way, we can move forward to the next lecture. All right, so obviously what we need to have first, it's a domain name and of course sign up with a hosting company. So here in the booklet, let's scroll down to the next page and we can see that we have a hosting page. We're gonna click on the sign up now or you can go directly to siteborn.com forward slash hostgator and you will land in this hostgator page. Hostgator is a great hosting company to host WordPress websites because it's extremely fast, extremely durable and secure, and they have great customer service. Combine it with a coupon code that I'm going to provide you with and you will have the best price guarantee for your WordPress websites. All right, so we can see that they have four different options to choose from. They have the web hosting that also known as the shared hosting, WordPress hosting, VPS and dedicated. I want to talk to you briefly regarding those four options so you can take the best decision for your business. All right, as we can see, we have short explanation over here and let's start with the shared hosting. The shared hosting is the most affordable plan and shared hosting means that you share the hosting, the resources of the hosting with other websites on the same host. So for example, if you are website A and suddenly website B have a spike in traffic because he has a viral post or something, so he's going to draw more resources from the hosting. As a result, you may see a small decrease in your site speed. The WordPress hosting, it's very similar to the shared hosting. However, the WordPress hosting only going to deliver WordPress files. WordPress is a CMS platform generating a lot of PHP files. So they created the WordPress hosting to serve those files in the most efficient way. It's going to be just a little bit faster and more secure. The VPS hosting, it's the same as shared hosting. However, the big host, the big server is divided and split to usually 10 small servers. And each of the servers has its own group of websites, way less than the shared hosting. So for example, again, if you are website A and suddenly website E see increase in traffic, it's not going to affect you. And the last one, the dedicated hosting is the most expensive option. It's one server for one website. Because you're just starting your website journey, I recommend you to go with the shared hosting or the WordPress hosting because they are really good and they are affordable. In this tutorial, I'm going to go with the shared hosting because it's the most affordable. All right, here you have three options to choose from. You have the hatchling, the baby, and the business plan. And the main differences between the three is the number of the domain names that you can register on each plan. So the hatchling is one single domain when the other two, you can register unlimited domains. If you think you're only gonna have one domain, just go with the hatchling. If you're gonna register more, go with the baby plan. All right, when you're using my link, you're gonna have your free domain. So definitely use the coupon code that I'm gonna share with you in a bit. All right, we are on a register a new domain tab. If you already own a domain, click on this tab, fill it up here and move to the second step. Otherwise, stay on this tab. Now I'm going to look for the desired domain. Because I'm going to create a gym website, I'm gonna look for like active body. I'm gonna click enter and enter again to find the com. I can see that the domain is taken. I cannot use it. Here I have two options, whether to choose a different extension such as like .club, .online, .org, .net, etc. Or just to go with a long tail keyword, active body gym, etc. Okay, I'm gonna research. I see that it's taken again. I'm going to dig deeper and trying to be more creative. I already did my research. I know that good body gym is available. I'm gonna look for it. I can see that I get a green feedback. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect domain. However, that's what available and sometimes you need to take what's available. So I can see that I get the domain for free. I'm gonna scroll down. Of course, you have the option to add other domains as you wish. And I can see that under the domain list, I have this box checked and the domain privacy is on. What does it mean? When you go to whois.com into the whois tab, you can type in any domain name that you would want. If there is no protection on the domain, you will be able to see the name who registered the domain along with the address. I enter the udemy.com domain and I can see that they have 
uh, domain protection and I can see the office's address of the registered domain, not of the company itself. Okay, if you want to hide your identity, if you want to hide your name and your address, keep that box check. However, I don't mind, I don't want to hide the identity and therefore I also want to save more money so therefore I uncheck this box. Over here in the second section, you need to choose a hosting plan. We already chose the hatchling plan and here under the billing cycle you have the option to choose one month to three years. Of course, when you register for a longer period of time, you will save more money. As you can see, between one year to three years when you're using my coupon code, you can save between 55% to 60.5%, which is amazing. I highly recommend you to go with three years to save a lot of money. However, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this domain. It's only for the course. I'm going to sign up with one year plan. Here, just choose a username. I'm going to call the username the same as I called my domain name, GoodBodyGym, and the security code. If you ever need a support from them, they will ask you for your security code. So choose a number between four numbers and eight numbers. Here, uh, section number three, you already did it 100 times. You have uh, the payment, billing info. You can choose credit card or PayPal. And here, section number four, you have the additional add-ons services. You have these two boxes already automatically checked. I'm going to uncheck them to save money. And again, we can also get those services using WordPress plugins when we're going to talk about the plugins. So definitely you have multiple options in, in the future or you can also uh, check them back again later on from your dashboard. So don't worry about it. And here the last part is uh, section five and six. We can see right now that the price is $114 for the first year. However, when you enter my coupon code, SITEBORN, and you're going to click on validate, we can see that the price dropped in almost 50%, guys. This is amazing. This is a great, great deal. We can see that we're getting the domain name completely free and the hosting package dropped from 107 to $64 uh, as a result it's over $60 in savings which is amazing this is the best deal that you can have ever get when signing up for HostGator so definitely use my coupon use my links and you will save a lot of money all right scroll down check this box and click on checkout now all right so after clicking on the checkout now button it's going to create and set up your account it's a process that will take approximately five minutes you don't need to do anything, just stay patient and that's it. You may see this screen, they're gonna ask you some questions. You can scroll down, click skip. Later on, you may see this screen or may not, I don't know, they're always changing it. In case you do see any of those screens, just scroll to the bottom, click skip or go to dashboard, just like we have here. All right, this is your HostGator dashboard. Generally, we probably won't access it too many times. We don't have too many things to do here besides setting up email addresses or changing our billing information. So we're not going to use it much often besides this lecture or maybe the next one. But I do want to show you that after you register with HostGator, check your personal email address, the one that you sign up with, and you will see that you received three emails from them. Your billing information, your account info, and the top email which is to verify your domain name so click on the verify link and wait for this message to appear telling you that you verify your domain which is excellent again you have two more emails with the billing info and the account info and you can see here all the information how to access the hostgator account you have the generated password that they generated for you and the link over here for the dashboard however we already logged in so we can close uh, the email and we can access the dashboard over here the first thing that i would like to do is to create an email account with our domain name it's not really professional to have a business email with gmail or hotmail all right so instead of that let's create support at our domain name.com or admin at our domain name.com and we can do it from here from the HostGator dashboard for free. So let's quickly click on the email accounts link. And as we can see, 
our domain name already grayed out. So this is going to be our domain name, of course, that we just purchased. And now we can call it either support, admin, your first name, etc. Of course, you can create multiple accounts. If the gym has two coaches, you can have joe at domainname.com and also jane at domainname.com. You can have as many accounts as you want. I will create a support account and will generate a password for this email address. We're going to change the 500 to unlimited and click on this orange button in order to create this email address. After clicking on this button, we will have a green feedback notifying us that the account was created successfully and we can see it here under the email accounts list over here. Now we can access it pretty easily. I will show you a quick way. All you need to do is type in mail.yourdomainname.com forward slash webmail. In our case, it's mail.goodbodygym.com forward slash webmail. It will take us to our HostGator login screen. And here under the webmail tab, as you can see it here, all you need to do is to enter your email address that you want. For example, support at your domain name.com or admin, etc. The password that you generated for this email account and click on login. Here you will have three email clients to choose from. You probably never used them before, but they are really good. I had a lot of success with Roundcube. That's my preferred one. So I'm going to set it as default and going to click on it. Here is our inbox. Right now it's empty. Obviously it's a brand new inbox and therefore we have nothing there. Let's make sure it's working. Click on compose in order to send an email to your personal Gmail or Hotmail account. I'm going to type one of my Gmail accounts uh, in the to line and in the subject line, I'm just going to write hi. In the body text, I'm going to ask, is it working? After sending the message, go to your email account, your personal private email account. And as you can see, we received the email. So the sending function is working. Let's respond, make sure that we can receive emails in our new mailbox. So I responded. And after refreshing the inbox, it may take about 30 seconds for the new email to arrive. And after a few refreshes, I can see that I re received the respond. Everything is working. I can send email. I can receive emails and everything is working properly. And we can move forward to the next lecture. All right, guys. So in this lecture, I want to talk about SSL certificate why we need it and thankfully if you use my link to register to hostgator you already have it installed and activated on your domain name as you can see to the left of the domain here we have a padlock meaning that the website is secured and that's ssl certificate any website or most websites you will visit you will see this uh, padlock and you can see that it's https when the s means secure and why do we need this SSL certificate? For three main reasons. The first reason is that you will be able to charge credit cards or PayPal if you would like to sell digital or physical products. You cannot do it without SSL certificate. The second reason is because Google already indicated that a website with SSL certificate will rank higher over his competitors that doesn't have a certificate. And the third reason, if somebody is trying to access your website through the HTTPS protocol and your website don't have the SSL certificate, he will receive a warning message like so. And that will intimidate the customer or the visitor and he will navigate away from your website. Again, if you use my link to register to HostGator, you already have it activated for free on your website. Let's just double check. Click on this quick link SSL management over here and we can see our domain name on the left with an active status of the ssl and the auto renew is on which is great just keep it that way make sure it's that way and if you couldn't find a quick access link through this dashboard you can always access it through the c panel control panel just click uh, on control panel 
Over here, click on Control F or Command F to search for SSL. And that's the one over here with the green padlock icon next to it. Again, just click on it. They will try to uh, ask you to upgrade or to sell you a different package. Just click on Return to the SSL screen. Just make sure it's active and the auto renew is on. And before you move on, guys, it's very important step, very crucial. Do it right now before we are moving forward to the next lecture. All right, guys. So in this lecture, we are going to install WordPress. We can access it through here, or if you can't find it in the quick links menu, you can launch the cPanel and use it. Uh, this link over here. However, this time I'm going to use this quick links. I'm going to click on install WordPress. It will take us to this screen. Here we're going to choose our domain name from the list. We only have one option. Click install, and we will need to fill some details regarding our blog. You need to find your title that match your brand, match your business. Because this is a gym, I thought about the road to a good body starts with us. That also contain the business name inside the slogan, which is nice. You need to think for your business, of course. Admin user, mostly or usually it's just admin. And you have the option to fill first name and last name or just your business name as your first name and last name. It's your option. Here in the admin email, remember that we already created an email address with our domain name. It is best practice to install your WordPress website with your own domain name, not with your personal Gmail or Hotmail account. It's not recommended. So definitely use the account with your domain name. If you didn't create one earlier, please do it now before installing WordPress. Check this box and click on install. Excellent. It's a process that will take only a minute or so. You can see the progress bar here at the top right corner. And we can see that it's already installed. Uh, we have the credentials here and the quick login button that we can use. If you accidentally close this page, they sent you a link with your credentials to your business email account. All right. I remind you, we can access it with mail.yourbusiness domain.com forward slash webmail. All right, we already did it in the email lecture. As you can see, I have the login button over here. I can log into my email account and I can see that I received a message from WordPress with my credentials over here. So definitely you can use it to and access it through your email account. Excellent, so let's close this one and let's quickly access with this login link. And here we will need to fill our username and password in order to access our dashboard of WordPress. So it's very easy to remember admin. I don't need to copy that. However, I'm going to copy my password because they generated a secure password for us. And I'm going to paste it here and click on remember me and log in. This is our WordPress dashboard. It's kind of messy right now because it's came pre-installed with many plugins that we don't need. We are going to clean it in the next lecture and going to talk about the menus. All right, so we are inside WordPress dashboard. We can scroll down. We will get familiar with it as we're moving forward with our course. We can see a lot of messages and pop-up boxes, etc. The first thing I would like to show you is the admin bar at the top. That will stay with us as long as we are logged in. And the left sidebar on the left, of course, where that contains a lot of tabs. Some of the tabs are system related to WordPress, such as the posts, the media, pages, plugins, users, tools, settings, etc. They will always be there regardless of which plugin we have installed. And other tabs are there just because we have a specific plugin installed on our WordPress, such as WP Forms. All right. So obviously, as you guessed, the first thing that I would like to do is to delete plugins and clean our dashboard. Therefore, we will go to the plugins tab one of the default tab that always going to be there for us. Scroll down and you can see all the plugins that we have installed on our website. They came pre-installed by default when we installed WordPress. All the active plugins has a light blue background and all the inactive plugins has a white background. So the first thing I want to do is just to deactivate and delete all the plugins. We can check them one by one. 
or we can click on this box and check them all together. Change the option to deactivate, click apply, and now you will see that all the plugins have a white background, which means they are all inactive. And immediately we can see that all the messages we had disappeared and our sidebar menu on the left got smaller, which is good. Now let's check them one more time again, change the option to delete and click apply. Click OK and all the plugins will be deleted one by one, which is great. We're all going to start fresh on the same page, which is excellent. All right, after you're done, just refresh the page or go to install plugins one more time and make sure no plugins are there. So before we're moving forward, guys, just make sure to do it so we can all start from the same step. After deleting all the plugins, let's visit our website and see what we are dealing with and how it looks like. We can see that we have a plain website. We have the admin bar at the top because we are logged in as the administrator of the website. We can scroll down and what we see, it's pretty much a default WordPress theme with default WordPress content that came pre-installed when we installed WordPress, which is good. Now, what I want you to focus on is our domain name at the, at the bar over here. We can see that the domain is not secured, but that's weird because we enable the SSL certificate. So why is that? And we also don't see an HTTPS protocol. And that's because we didn't define it to access the HTTPS. We can change it by go to settings and then general. And here, the first thing that we will need to do is to swap between the site title and the tagline. So I'm going to cut this one from here. And in the site title, I'm just going to write my business name. In our case, it's Good Body Gym. And here in the tagline, I'm going to delete it and paste the previous title that we had, just like that. Excellent. Now here in the URL sections, we can change the HTTP to contain HTTPS. And we also have the option to add www dot to our domain name if we wish. In my case, I don't want to do it. It's kind of old fashioned and therefore I deleted it. And we need to make sure this line over here match the line above it. So both of them is the same domain name. All right, we have the option to change the language of the dashboard if we want and change the date format, of course. Scroll all the way down and click on save changes. It will log you out of WordPress and you will need to log in back again. Just click on login. If you've been asked to verify your email, you can do so by clicking on this blue button or just skip this message. Doesn't really matter. And we can see now that it shows HTTPS, we are going to refresh our page and we can see that our domain name contain the padlock over here to the left of the domain and the domain name itself contain HTTPS, which means secure. Excellent. We can move forward. So when we're looking at our website and we compare it to our demo website, we can see that it's completely different. And this is the final result that we would like to achieve. However, we have some quite of a way to make in order to achieve this result. And the first step that we will need to take is to change our theme. So let's talk about a theme and what is it. As you can see in the booklet, themes are used to simplify the process of creating a website. It is a collection of templates and style sheets that define the appearance and the display of a website. So now that we know that, we can move forward and install the right theme for us. So first of all, let's close these two windows and from our backend, from our WordPress dashboard, let's go to Appearance and Themes. Here we can see that our WordPress websites came pre-installed with four of these themes. All right, we're going to use a different one. So click on Add New. And here you have few more themes to choose from, actually many more. And you can also move or click on the Popular tab and see many, many more themes. Now, before the Page Builders era, the themes had a major role on the impact of how our website is going to look. However, because we are going to use a page builder, we have a different requirement for the themes today in today's world. 
So we are going to look for a minimum team that will give us maximum results. We are going to use a team that developed by the same company that created the page builder. And this team called Hello Elementor. We're going to use it because it's very minimal, it's very fast, and it's a great team to work with, and it allows you to create any website and any design that you wish. So look for Hello Elementor, click on Install, and then click on Activate. Great, we can see that the theme was added to our themes list. We can see that it's active. And let's revisit our website one more time. We can see that it's changed a bit. It's very minimal, very clean, only contain few lines, and that's perfect. That's what we need for now. Let's go back to our themes screen. And it's a good time now to delete all the other themes that we are not going to use. So let's delete all of them. We're only going to keep the Hello Elementor and the latest theme that is not Hello Elementor. We can see the numbers. We can see that the latest theme right now is 2020, so we are going to keep it because we want to have at least one theme as a backup. Now we can talk about a child team, why we need it and how to get it. So now let's talk about a child team and why we need it. We can see that we have the Hello Elementor team. And what is a child team? WordPress themes get updated frequently. Without a child team, all the design changes that we did will vanish in the next update of the parent team. So think about that you created a very nice, beautiful design with great content and suddenly it's going to disappear after you update the team. So let's pretend that this is our website with Hello Elementor team and every WordPress team contain many PHP files that creates and generates the look and the function of the website. Let's say we change this design, the body color to red, and we're happy with that. In the next update, all those files are gonna be overwritten by the update and our design will disappear. However, when we have a child team, we can see that this is our parent team with the many files. And on top of it, we have the child team that contain only two files, or two or three files, mostly the style.css and the functions.php file. We can see that we apply the changes of the body color to red on the child team. And now when we are going to update the parent team, all those files are going to be overridden by the update, but it's not going to affect the child team. Our child team will remain untouched and the design going to stay in place. So let's download a child team. First of all, let's close this window, go back to our booklet, and we have a download link over here that we can download the child team for free. This website, Plugins for WP, created it for us. Click on free add to cart and then on the checkout button. Excellent. All we have left to do is just enter the email where we would like to receive the child team. I'm going to enter the business email address with our fresh domain, support at goodbodygym.com, enter your name, check this box and click on free download. Excellent, now the child team is waiting in your email box and you can also download it from here from the purchase confirmation page, just scroll down and click on this link. Great, we can see that the download Finished after a couple seconds. Excellent. Go back to your WordPress website, click on Add New, and then on Upload Team here at the top, and just drag the child team over here, or just click on Choose File and choose it from the download folder. Click on Install Now, and after you finish installing the theme, click on Activate. Great job. We can see that the child team is active. It's showing here Hello Element or Child Team and the parent team is just next to it. We can close both windows and revisit our website one more time. The website looks exactly the same. This is what we want. This is what we're expecting it to look like. And now we can start designing our website without fearing that the design will vanish in the next update. So just before we start, guys, please download and install the child team before moving on. Okay, so before we're going to start building our header, I would like to show you that the this icon with the number next to it indicates that we need and we have plugin or themes to update. And as you can see, it's a theme that we need to update. You can click on it or go to it through the dashboard and then updates. And here we can see 
that our WordPress is up to date. Over here, we have no plugins to update, but we do have one theme to update. So just check it, click on update themes, wait for the update to finish, and there you go, you get a green feedback, meaning that it's all good. Go back to the update screen, and as you can see, everything is up to date, and we can move forward. All right, so let's check again our demo website, sbcourse.com. And the first thing that we can see, it's white section at the top, that's called the header. Underneath the header, we have the content. Sometimes the content contain a sidebar in, on one of the sides. And at the bottom, we have the footer that sum it all up. All right, let's scroll back up again. And the header and the footer are the only two components that actually moving from page to page. You can see them on any page. And the only thing that's different between the pages and changing between the pages is the content. So in the home page, we're going to have different content than the contact us page that will contain only a contact form. If we are going to check a different website such as apple.com, for example, we can see that they also have a header. It designed a little bit differently. There is more narrow and the logo is very small on the left side. This is another great header, but just a different design. We can check disney.com, for example, to see that they have a different header. Right, they have something that is more similar to ours. The section is white and tall. Uh, they have a bigger logo than the Apple store. So overall, it's based on your preferences and you can mimic the websites that you like the most. In our website, we can see that we have two different components in our header. We have the logo on the left side and on the right side, we have menu that contains a link to different pages on our website. Let's start by creating the logo. All right, so let's start with our website logo. Go back to our booklet and you can see a list of many websites where you can create logos, beautiful logos for your website. We will use the top link, but you can check any of them if you wish. Now, here are the logo sizes that we need. We have a logo and a fav icon. What is a fav icon exactly? It's the small icon to the left of your tab. All right, right now we have a default host gate or fav icon, but we are going to change it because we are going to create one that will fit our business. We can see that the logo size should be 350 by 100 and the fav icon 512 by 512. Let's start by creating a logo. Click on the top link. It will take us to this logo maker, to this page. We can see in our demo site that we have the letter G. We have the icon that create illusion of double O and the rest of the text body gym. Uh, by knowing that, let's start by creating the first letter. We can design it. We can change the color of it, change the font if you wish. And now we can duplicate it and create the rest of the text. So I'm going to right click on it, duplicate, move it to the right so I can see it, create a nice gap between them and enter the rest of the text. Just like that, beautiful. I'm going to move it to the right again to create a gap. Now I need to find the right icon. So over here, I'm going to type exercise. Of course, you will type whatever you need and you will see hundreds of maybe even thousands of different icons, different colors that you can choose and you can work with. Excellent, just take your time and browse between all the icons. I already found mine it's the first one on the left click on it and just drag it to the right location where you want it from here it's just a matter of playing with the right sizes and make sure everything is aligned with each other in order to save you some valuable time i'm just going to speed the process up Okay, excellent. When you are satisfied with the result, it's good time to change the sizes to 350 by 100. We can see that it's way larger than that. Click on the crop icon on the bottom right corner. And here you can see the W and the H sizes in the yellow box, indicating the size of the white window. So let's make sure it's 350. We still have some 
picks us to reduce over here. We are on 350 now. And now let's change the height to 100. Just like that. When you are ready, double click in the white window. Just like that. And it's going to take the pixels. Now just resize the logo to fit the right size. Just like that. Make sure it's taking the whole width of it. Looking good. Make sure it's centered. Very nice. Now we can actually save the logo because it's the right size and it's the right logo. So we are going to click on the save icon on the top right corner. We have the option to purchase the HD or just free download the SD standard definition logo. Great. So now we need to create a fav icon. Again, fav icon, it's the icon to the left of our tab. And the fav icon is 512 by 512. So another way to change the canvas size is clicking on the setting icon. And over here, we can define the width and the height of the canvas, which is 512 by 512. And because the fav icon is very small, we don't need to enter any text. We can just delete all the text there. And we're just going to make the logo larger to take the whole square. Again, let's put it in the center. Very good. And when you're ready, just save this logo again in the low resolution or the high resolution if you want to purchase it. Beautiful. So now we have both icons. As you saw, it's pretty easy process to create logos. If you don't have this creative mindset or if you want something just a little bit more professional, check out this link, Fiverr logo. It will take you to this page where you can look for logo makers. For example, if you type in logo, it will show you many people, graphic designers who create and will create a professional logo for you for your business for very very affordable price we're talking between five dollars to 60 bucks it's very affordable for a logo all right so for example you have few 20 dollars offers over there and you can go to the budget tab over there and just type max of five dollars and you still have many options to choose from for five dollars so again try to make it yourself if you see that you have some struggles and you can't create the perfect logo for your business, just check Fiverr logo and somebody professional will create it for you for a very low price. All right, so after we downloaded our logos and fav icon, let's change the name of it to something that is more SEO friendly, something that the search engines will pick up. So your business name, space, fav icon, for the fav icon and for the logo, your business name space logo just like that now if you follow my course to the t and you're creating a gym website just like we do it in this course you have the two images in the resources folder where all the images are all right let's close both windows go back to our website and here we are going to click on the customize option at the admin menu bar and here in the customize window we have four options in the left sidebar over here go to site identity we can change the site title and the tagline in this screen as well and here we can choose our logo that we just created we can drag it from our downloads folder to here excellent click select at the bottom right corner we can crop it if we want to fit the logo better, just like so. I'm just going to crop it from the bottom and the top a bit. Or you can skip cropping. Depends on how you created your logo. Beautiful, just like that. This is great. Now we can set the fav icon. So click here. And drag your fav icon that you just created. Again, click select. In this case, I'm going to skip cropping because it's almost perfect. And we can see the fav icon over there look perfectly fine. Click on publish, close this window, revisit our homepage, and we can see our logo instead of the text. And we can see our 
brand new fav icon looking good and we can move forward all right so we do have a logo now and it's a good time to start and building the second component of the header which is the menu we can see in our demo site we have a menu with three links the blog link will take you to the blog page and display all the blog posts we have the about us link will take you to the about us page and the last link the contact us link link will take you to a specific section in our home page okay it's not a standalone page it's a specific section in this home page as you can see we will create a page for that for now just to create like a placeholder so we basically need to create three pages blog about us and contact us later on in this course we are going to remove the contact us and just link it to the section inside the home page so let's go back to our website and we can create the pages by going to new and then page or behind the scene to our wordpress dashboard pages and then add new it will show you the screen when visiting for the first time and what i want you to do is go to the three dots on the top right corner and uncheck the full screen mode because we want to have a quick access to the sidebar on the left very nice here we can add a title to our page now i would like to create a home page first so i'm going to create a home page i'm going to call it home however we're not going to add it to the menu because we can access the home page by clicking on the logo click publish and then publish again we don't need to add any content yet we just want to create the pages click new and then on page and now we are going to create the blog page that will display all of our blog posts publish and publish again create another page this one will be the about us page and the last page will be the contact us page again this is just a placeholder for the menu we are going to delete this page later and hook it to the home page excellent we created four pages we can go to the all pages screen to see all the pages we have created and we can see that we have three pages that was created automatically for us we can delete the sample page and the wp forms page we don't need them you can also delete the privacy policy page if you wish or you can keep it in case you need to have a privacy policy for your business all right let's view the home page first we can see that our home page is empty it's blank for now it's good however when we click on the logo it's taking us to our real home page and the real home page right now display our latest blog post and this hello world blog post came pre-installed with our wordpress why is that why do we see that because we didn't let wordpress know which page need to be the home page and which page need to be the blog post page another problem that we have we can see it when we're visiting one of the pages we created we can see the url contains weird words like index.php and when we're visiting our demo site we can see that the url is much cleaner and shorter and we have a problem here because we don't want to display index.php so we need to fix that as well we have two problems to fix let's start by setting up which page is the home page go to settings and then reading and here at the top the first option is your latest posts we need to change it to a static page click here and the home page will be our home page we created and the post page will be our blog page that we created if we created a blog page of course it depends if you want to run blog on your website all right save the changes and now let's fix the second problem it's the permalinks under the settings and we are going to change it to post name that will fix it scroll down click save changes very nice we can close all the extra windows we have let's revisit our home page once again we can see that it has been changed to our home page which is what we wanted now let's visit our about us page 
and we can see that it does not contain the weird URL anymore. It's very short, very descriptive, which is good. This is what we want. Excellent. So now we have the logo and we created the pages. Now let's create the menu. So go to appearance menus. They already created a menu for us that contains all the links. You can see it over here. We don't need the home link, so expand it and remove it because we can access the home screen straight from the logo. And here are all the other links that we created. You can scroll it and drag it up and down and reorganize it the way you want. You can also indent it to create a sub menu to one of the items if you want. We will touch and talk more about it later on when we will create our header. And after you reorganize it, just name the menu something descriptive so you will remember what it is. Something like header menu. Click on create menu. Excellent. Our menu is ready. We can go back to our home page and we can see that we don't see it after refreshing the page. It's not a problem. It's just because we didn't define where we want the menu to be. Now we can combine all of our components together and create a beautiful header with our Elementor Page Builder plugin in the next lecture. So in order to create the header, we will need to use a plugin, a Page Builder plugin, that will help us to do just that. Let's go to our dashboard. And here to Plugins, Install Plugins. And here we will have a list of all the plugins that we currently have installed, but because we deleted them all, we have no plugins at all right now. Let's talk about plugins. What are they and why we need them? So just like your smartphone or your computer, out of the box, they can do many things, right? With your smartphone and with your computer, you can, you can use the calculator app, you can use flashlight with your smartphone, a GPS app, etc. You can also play Angry Birds with your smartphone However, you will need to install the app. You will need to install the Angry Bird app in order to play it. Same with computer. If you want to edit videos, you will need to install a video editor software, right? Same with WordPress. WordPress is very flexible content management system. It can deliver content and you can also sell physical or digital products with it. However, it's going to be easier for you if you will install the right plugin to help you do just that. Okay, so that's what plugins are for, to extend the functionality of WordPress. So here inside the plugins screen, click on add new at the top, and here you will have many plugins to choose from. WordPress has thousands of plugins, and we can search for a specific one here. Let's type Elementor, and we can see the first result on the left, Elementor with over 5 million active installations. This is unbelievable and average of 5 stars. This is a great, a great page builder and it's the most popular, probably top 3 most popular plugins in the world. Now you can use the install now button to install it. However, because we are going to use Elementor so often, I would like you to have a physical copy saved on your computer for a backup. So go to our booklet and click on get Elementor. You can also go directly to sitebone.com forward slash Elementor. We are going to download Elementor and save it on our local machine. All right. Uh, here in the Elementor website, click on get started. On this screen, it doesn't really matter what you're choosing. We just want to access the download link. So let's click continue on the yes, I do. And here at the bottom, we have a tiny link, as you can see, that will allow us to download the copy of Elementor. Just click on it and the download will start in a second. Just like that. And now it's a good time to upload it to our website. How do we do that? Fairly easy. Again, we can install it by clicking on the install now or we can click on upload plugin because we already downloaded it. We can choose the file or just drag it over there. Click on install now. Wait for the installation to be completed. And after a few seconds, click on Activate Plugin. Excellent. 
after we activated Elementor, we can see the Elementor tab added to our sidebar on the left with many options under it. Let's close the instruction video. We are not going to use it. And actually we have two new tabs, Elementor and Templates. Templates are design blocks that can be used on multiple pages. The header and the footer of the website are templates that we will create only once and we will direct the website to display them on every page. The template feature, it's a feature of the pro version of Elementor. The pro version of Elementor also comes with many, many widgets that will allow us unlimited possibilities to design our website exactly as we want. The pro version only going to cost you $49 and it will save you thousands of dollars uh, instead of paying to graphic designer or web developer, you will be able to do everything by yourself. All right, so let's get the pro version, go back to Elementor, click on the X, and are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Let's exit the screen, go back to the Elementor homepage, and here click on pricing. Now they have few packages, it all depends on how many websites you have. If you only have one website, just go with a, pro, uh, with a personal plan. For one website, it's only going to cost you $49. And of course, it comes with all the pro widgets and of course the team builder feature that I explained what it is and it's amazing. It's really, really amazing and we're going to use it a lot. Click on buy now. If you used my link, sidebone.com forward slash Elementor, if there is any discount on the plugin, it will load the discount when you guys using my link. So definitely give it a shot and try. Click on the checkout after you're filling your information. You can check out with credit card or PayPal. And on the next screen in the My Account screen, you can download the plugin by clicking on this button over here. You have the license key also. That's this long number in case you will need it to activate the plugin. I'm not sure. I think they have a different kind of activation right now, but we'll see as we're moving forward. Go to plugins, add new again. Click on upload plugin. And now it's a good time to upload our pro version of Elementor. Click on install now. And then activate the plugin. Excellent, we can see that we have two plugins installed and activated right now. It's Elementor and Elementor Pro. Now let's connect our Elementor Pro with our license. Click on Elementor and license and then click on connect and activate. If you need to enter your license, you know where to get it. If it will show you this screen, that's great. Just uncheck this box. You don't want to send any information. Click on activate and it will activate your website with your Elementor account. It's gonna take a few seconds and then you'll get a green active feedback notifying you that it's all connected with each other. So I guess we didn't need to use the license key. It's okay, just close the screen. And now we have the pro version activated and we can move forward and start building our website. So now we can start creating our header. We have two options to do that. The first option, which is not the smartest option, is to create a header here in the home page, then navigate to the About Us page, try to mimic and create the same header, and then move to the Contact Us page and create the same header over there. It's a repetitive process and we shouldn't do it. What we should do is to create a template for the header once and display it on all pages. Because we have the Pro Elementor version we can go to template and then team builder and we have the option to create templates to all these tabs so let's create a header template click on add new here choose header and just give it a name over here i'm going to call it header excellent click enter or the green button to create the template and after you did so you will have few pre-designed templates that Elementor created for you to choose from. Because we don't know how to use Elementor just yet, I'm not going to choose a pre-designed header. I'm going to close the screen and we will build our header ourselves. And that's a great way to practice Elementor. So I closed it and what you see right now, it's the Elementor screen. 
it has two components. The sidebar on the left that contains all the widgets that we can use in order to design our website. We're gonna go through many of them during this course. All right, you have many, many options and the component on the right, which is the website or the design that we are building. All right, excellent. So we want to have a header so we can click on the plus icon to create the section. But let's go back to our demo site and we can see that our header is divided to two columns. The one on the left contains the logo and the one on the right contains the menu. All right, so we know that we need a section with two columns. So click on the plus icon and here you have many section layouts to choose from. Let's go with this option, the two columns section. After we edit the section, we can see two things happen. The section is at the top and our widget panel changed to edit section panel. Why is that? Because it's indicating that we are editing the section, which is the one with the light blue border. Inside the section, we have two columns that are taking 1040 pixels and you can edit each of the column by clicking on this gray square icon over there and also one over here. Because we have two columns, we have two icons. After clicking on the gray icon, we can see that the edit section changed to edit column, meaning we are editing the column. In order to navigate back to the widgets list panel, just click on this icon and here you can see all the widgets back again. And now we can drag the desired widget to the desired column. And we know that the site logo need to be on the left side, so we drag it to the left column. Excellent, we can see the widget here on the left side. And before we are moving forward, I want to explain to you really quick how the elemental sections are working. I created this diagram to simplify the idea. So here we can see that the black section is the section. It's taking the full width of the screen, 100% left to right. Inside the section, we have the column painted in peach color. The column is taking 1040 pixels and it's positioned in the center in the middle of the section. And the last component, it's the widget painted in light blue. It's inside the column and it's taking 100% full width of the column. As you can see, the light blue widget taking 100% left to right inside the column. Same goes with the section that contains two columns, right? So the section taking the full width, 100%. The columns inside the sections are limited to 1040 pixels, both of them combined and the widgets inside each of the columns is taking 100% full width inside the column. Same exact with a section that contains three columns. Bottom line, section full width of the screen, columns 1040 pixels combined, and widgets 100% inside the column. Back to Elementor, every widget has three different tabs. The content tab is in charge for the content of the widget. Because every widget has a different content, the options inside this content tab are different from one widget to another. From the style tab, we can control the appearance of the widget. For example, we can change the text color, the text size, the line height, the background color, the border color, etc. And in the advanced tab, we have options that doesn't fit the other two tabs. For example, we have the option to change the margin and the padding of the widget. We can control the position of the element. We can also hide it on certain devices like smartphones or tablets. And we also have the option to add custom CSS to the widget or the element that we are working with. So that can be done to the advanced tab as well. Here in the content tab, we can see that there is not much to change. It's pretty much straightforward. The only thing that we may want to change is just to align the logo to the left. So we're going to click on this icon. And here in the style tab, we can take our design much further. We can control the width of the logo by sliding this left or right. Doesn't really matter if it's the width or the max width. Here I'm sliding it to the right. I can see that it's on the percentage option. So I'm going to change it to pixels. And remember that our logo is 350. So if we are dragging it to 350, it's nice, but 
I feel like it's still kind of big. So in my opinion, we can definitely do it maybe 285. I think that looks way better, just like that. Again, not too many options to do with the logo. It's very straightforward. And now we can move to the menu. And here we can see that we have the nav menu widget. We can drag it to the right column and start designing our menu. So we drag it there. And because we only have one menu, we created only one menu, it's automatically going to show us the menu created. If you had more menus, you can choose the one by clicking here. So what we need to, cho to change right now is just to align it to the right. So the logo and the menu will be far away from each other, just like so. The pointer is set to underline. And as you can see here in the demo site, whenever we hovering our mouse on the link, we can see an underline under each of the links. Right now it's set to green underline. However, we have the option to change it to overline or any other option. Overline, for example, will display the line above the link. We can also change it to none and then it will be no effect whatsoever, which is also nice. But I definitely like the underline. This is my favorite option to go with and I will bring it back to underline. Now we can move on to the style tab and change the text size and also the colors. Let's start by clicking on typography and we can slide the size maybe to 18. I think it's a great size for a menu items. And now while we are still in the normal state, we can change the text color. I already know the code of the color that I want. I can click on this square and choose the color, look for all of them and find the one, the right I want. But because I already know which one I want, I'm just going to paste the color code here. And because I'm going to use this color pretty often during this course, I would like to add it to the color palette. I'm going to click on the plus icon and I can see that the color was added successfully. And now I'm just going to rearrange it, put it all the way on the left. It's probably going to be my most used color. Great. So the normal state is almost pretty much done actually. Now we can move forward to the hover state and design the look of it when our mouse hover on top of the link. So the text color, we would like to keep the same purple. However, we would like to change the underline, the pointer color to pink. I already have the pink color code. I'm going to copy it. Click on this. Icon, of course, choose any pink that I want and any color that I want. However, because I already know the color, I'm just going to paste it here. And again, I'm going to click on the plus icon to add it to my color palette and just rearrange the order of the colors. Okay, great. I can see that it's looking really good. The right colors, the right size. There is one more thing that we need to adjust. We can see that the logo widget is taller than the menu widget and therefore these two widgets are not aligned with each other and we would like to change it to make it align with each other. To vertically align all the widgets in the middle of the section, we will need to go to the settings of the section and change the vertical align from default to middle. And now we can see that the menu widget jumped to the center, to the middle of the section, and now it's perfectly aligned with the logo. Great, when you satisfy, just click publish. Here you will be asked where you would like to display the template. So click on add condition. And here we would like to display it in the entire site. Click save and close. Our header is ready. Let's visit our website once again. And we can see our beautiful header at the top of the page. Great job. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you a few more options on how to design our header. And we're also going to talk about responsive design. Okay, in this lecture, I'm just going to show you a couple more options regarding the header. Let's say you want to change the background color of the header from white to something else. We can do that. Let's go to the Elementor screen. We can choose each of the columns, however, it's going to be smarter just to 
change the background color of the section. So let's edit the section itself into the style tab. And here inside the background option, we can change the background type to classic. And here we can decide which color we want the background color to be. In our case, I'm just going to change it to light gray because it's going to look good with all the other colors and the logo. You can click on update and revisit your website once again to make sure the changes took place. Looks really good. I like it. And the next option, the next thing that I would like to show you, it's when you have a sub menu under one of your menu links. Okay, so let's say we want to have few links under the about us page let's just add them to the menu screen let's go to appearance menus and because we only have three pages i'm not going to create more pages i'm just going to add more links i'm going to create three custom links the link going to be to google just for example and the link text going to be link one two and three you will see in a second what we are dealing with I added it to the menu. Now I'm going to create a couple more links. Also Google link number two and link number three. Now I would like those links to be a sub menu under the about us page, for example. So I'm going to drag it up and push them aside just like so. and click on save menu. Now the about us page will have three links underneath, link one, link two, and link three. After refreshing the page, we can see that those links appear underneath the about us just where we wanted it to be. Now we also have the option with Elementor to edit and design the sub menu, which is great. So let's edit the menu widget by clicking on it. And we can change the submenu indicator from none to arrow or chevron or something like that. It will indicate that there are more links underneath this menu item. Great. I would like to keep it none. We can go to the style tab and now we can change the colors and the appearance of the submenu items. Here in the drop down tab, we can see that we have the option to change the colors. For example, we would like to have a pink background and maybe black text, just like so. You can also change this gray overlay under the hover state to white. Obviously, guys, I'm simplifying the process for clarity. The point that I'm trying to prove, it doesn't matter on which widget you are working on when you are using Elementor edit and design your widgets, it will give you a lot of options and possibilities to work with. All you need to do is just move between the three tabs, the content, style, and advanced, and go through the different options that you have. We will go through many of them during this course. What I want you to take from this lecture is it's okay to make mistakes. You can design it however you want. In the worst case, just delete the element and redo it. If you are happy with the result, just update it and revisit your website to make sure it's look exactly as you wished. All right, of course, I'm not going to keep this subheader menu, so I'm going to delete all the demo links I created and then to save the menu. After refreshing the page, the submenu is no longer there. Even though that the light gray background is nice, I like to keep my header simple. I'm going to undo and bring back the white color. Excellent. In the next lecture, we are just going to make sure that our header is looking good on every screen size, such as tablet and smartphones. All right, so we like the header on desktop. Let's make sure it's also looking good on tablet or smartphone. So click on this icon over here and you have Two more options to view tablet mode and mobile mode and we can see that the design is responsive it adjusted to the screen size and we can also see that we have some changes to make such as in the tablet and in the mobile for example here in mobile view 
the columns are stuck on top of each other, as you can see, unlike in the desktop view when they are one next to each other. And that happened because a responsive design stack columns on top of each other in order to give each of the element more space, full width. While in most cases it's great, in the header section it's not that necessary because it's a section that contains only two elements, a logo and this burger icon. So we can actually arrange it instead of one on top of each other, one next to each other, like, just like in the desktop view. So let's edit the top column first. We have the option here to change the width of the column to any width that you want, let's say 50. If the logo expand over the width of the column, we need to edit the logo again. So click on the logo and under the style tab, change the max width to 100%. That's only going to affect the mobile view because we are in the mobile view screen. Great. So now let's adjust the column again. Instead of 50, we can make it 65 to take more space, just like so. And now we can set the other column to be no more than 35, otherwise it will jump down. So let's set it to be 35. Both columns cannot be more than 100% together. And because the first column is 65%, the second column cannot be more than 35%. Very nice. Let's just move this icon to the right as much as we can by clicking on this toggle align right. Very nice. The next thing that we need to do, it's just to vertically align the icon in the column. And also when we expanding the menu, we would like the links to take 100% of the screen size. We can achieve both tasks by toggle the full width option to on. We can see that the links are now full width and the icon is vertically aligned in the center. If you would like to style the sub menu, we can do so by going to the style tab. And here inside the drop down option, we can see that it saved everything from our last lecture. We have the background color and the text color to be purple and pink. I'm going to change the text color to white. I think it will fit better. And also the background color of the hover effect to dark purple, just like so. I like this color combination and I will keep it like that for now. The next thing is just to make sure it's looking good on tablets as well. And we can see that it's inherited the design from mobile, which is great. It's going to save us a lot of time. However, there is one more thing that we need to change about the burger icon because it's too light on white background. So I think we can change the background color of the icon to dark purple or black. So now let's open the toggle button option and change the background color to dark purple, just like so. I really like it, looks really good. You can move back to desktop view, make sure it didn't change. Just click save or update, revisit your website and we can move forward to our next lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the three page templates that came with our team. Let's look at the first section that also known as the hero section. We can see that we have background image, background gradient, some text and a button, right? And when we want to create this kind of section in our page, we'll need to do it with Elementor. So click on edit page and here look for the edit with Elementor button. You can find it at the top of the screen. Click on it. And here inside the Elemental screen, I'm just going to create a demo section just to show you the differences between the three different page templates that we have. So let's take this heading widget. I will change the background color of the section to any other color, for example, purple. And now when expanding the screen, I can see that the section looks good though. However, we have the page title just above the section between the header and the section and therefore we cannot create the same section as we have in our demo site. We can see our section here 
And here we can see the page title saying home just between the section and the header, which is creating some kind of a barrier. All right, so we need to change it somehow. We need to hide the page title. So in order to do that, we need to change the page attribute under the document tab. So right now it's set to default template and the default template shows the title. If we want to hide the title, we can change it to element of full width. It's exactly just like the default template, just without the page title. And as you can see, after we change it to full width, the title disappeared. We also have another one over there called element or canvas. And the element or canvas will hide the header, the footer, and the page title. And this is a great template for landing pages, naturally to create standalone pages like about us, home, etc. So our element of full width template is probably the most popular template when we're creating pages for our website. So I will switch it back to the element of full width. And now we can start working again with Elementor. And after clicking on refresh, we no longer see the page title, which is great, and we can move forward. All right, so in creating our hero section, we will learn so many cool new things uh, right now. First of all, let's go to our demo site, and we can see that we need a section with two columns. The one on the left will contain the content, and the one on the right will be empty, will contain nothing. So we will create a section with two columns, and of course, we are going to drag the elements to the column on the left. So we are going to drag title, text editor, and then a button. That's our two elements that we, we are going to use in this section. Great. Now we need to set a background image to our section. So click on the settings icon of the section and go into the style tab. Here under the background section, click on classic. And here you have an option to choose an image. Where do we get beautiful images? We can't use images from Google because they are copyrighted. Here in my booklet, I made a short list of beautiful websites where you can find beautiful images. This one, for example, it's free. You can look for your desired image, such as gym, fitness, coffee shops, whatever your business is about, and look for the right image for you. In our demo site, we see that we need an image that most of the activity happened on the right side and on the left side it's pretty much empty and our text can shine so there are only couple images over here that can actually be useful maybe this one i don't see too many other images i can use in our case of course it depends on however you want to design your section if you can't find the right image for you make sure to go to shutterstock which is the first link this website has more images and the images are very professional. They do cost money. However, when you are using my link, you'll get the first 10 images completely for free, as you can see on the screen. When using Shutterstock, we have way more professional images to choose from. They have thousands of images from every niche and every business. Definitely check it out. I went through many of them and I already found and downloaded the one that I like and you can find it in our resource folder. In your case, I recommend you to check this link, find beautiful image for your website. You will not regret they have really, really great images. All right, back to our Elementor screen, because we already have a background image, just choose and upload the background image to here. And this is the one, I'm gonna drag it into WordPress, wait for it to upload and then choose it to be my background image. Great, I can see the tip of the head at the bottom right side. So I need to play with the position of the image. I'm going to change it to center center. I also going to set the repeat to no repeat because I only want it to display once and the size to cover. Now I can see the image look a little bit better. However, our section is very short and our demo section is very tall so we need to change the size so here still in the settings of the section go to layout and here under height you can change it to fit to screen which it will fit to the screen is on or mean height and change it to something like 600 or 5 or 700 depends on what you want 
just like so. And we can see immediately that it starts to look really good. However, we need to play with the position of the image one more time. Instead of center center, do it top center and we can see figure fully. It starts to look really good. We just need to create this background overlay and we can do it here just underneath the background section in the background overlay tab, expand it just like so, change the background type to either classic or gradient. We're gonna use this option. And here we have the option to set two colors. The first one will be purple and the second one will be transparent. So it doesn't really matter which color you're choosing, just make sure it's transparent by sliding it all the way to the left. Excellent, now let's create the angle, we change it to 90, which means the, the first color will start from all the way to the left, and we want the first color to meet around the middle, maybe like 50 or 60%, and the right color to meet him also around the middle. Pay attention that we don't want them to share the same number, because we do want to create some kind of special fading effect, as you can see here in the middle, just like so. Excellent. Now we can play with the opacity, make it more transparent or less transparent by sliding this slider. We can also play with the blend mode. Again, this is preferences based. You can just play with the options. If you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, just delete it. And here under the CSS filters, we can also start playing with the filters and see what we can come up with. Just like so, just make sure you like the result. This is okay, it's not exactly as we did in our demo site. However, it's good enough for our tutorial. Later on, I may look into how I created it earlier and maybe copy the style. But for now, let's just stay with that one. What I want you to understand is the example how to use it. All right, let's start playing with the content itself. We can see that we have the title here. First of all, we need to change it to white. Just like so, and we need to make it larger. So under the typography, just slide the size to the right to make it larger. Let's copy the text from here and we will paste it in the content tab. Nice, now we just need to reduce the size of the text because it's three lines and we want it to fit two lines, just like so. We need to change the color of the text editor to white and then create a transparent button. So click on the button and here we need to make it larger first. So instead of small, choose it to be large, change the text of the button to anything you want. In our case, it's going to be schedule appointment. And here under the style tab, we would like to create a border for the button. So we will change it from none to solid and then we will increase the number to one all around top right bottom and left and now we can see a white border let's reduce the opacity of the green background to zero so we will have a transparent background I'm gonna slide this one all the way to the left and we can see that we have no background anymore now let's give it a background color when hovering on it so here in the hover tab, the background color will be any other color that you would like. You can play with it and test it as you paint it, as you can see, because I like the purple and pink combination. I'm just going to do the pink one. We can see that it's nice. It's very similar to our demo example. And when clicking on the button, it will take us to the contact us section. However, because we don't have a contact us yet, we're not going to hook the button to anything. What we have left to do is pretty much just small adjustments, just like increasing the section height a little bit more, or maybe to 660. I think it's going to look better. And also maybe to change the line height of the title from one to 1.2, and it will create more space between the first line and the second line. When you're satisfied, click on update, and refresh your homepage to make sure it's looking good. And it is, I really like it. Now we can make sure it's looking good on tablets and mobiles and also make it better for Google and other search engines.
All right, so we like the way it looks. Just let's make sure it's looking good on mobile too. So let's switch to mobile view and we can see that overall it's okay, but we still have some changes to make. We can center the text. We can also make this section shorter and maybe paint the background color of the button in more darker color. So let's start with the text by clicking on it and go to the content tab and here we will center the text. Under the style tab, we'll click on the typography and when we see this mobile icon, that means we're only affecting the mobile view of the element. Okay, so by changing the size while we are in the mobile view, it's only going to affect the mobile view and not the tablet or the desktop. Okay, it's very important to know that. When we're satisfied with the text, let's move on to the text editor. And also here we can see that we are centering only in mobile. So let's center it. And the last thing will be the button. So we will center it as well. What we can do right now is just make the height of the section just a little bit shorter. And here, while we are in the mobile view, we will make it maybe 500. Remember that the desktop, it's going to be 660 if I remember right, but in mobile 500, it's good enough. Now we can change the button background color to something darker. So it's gonna pop up more, okay? So let's click on it. And here under the style tab, we don't see a mobile icon next to the background color option. Some options doesn't have a mobile icon, which means it will change in every viewport. So changing the color now will also affect the way it looks on mobile, tablet, etc. Unfortunately, that's the case. So how do we solve that? First of all, let's bring it back to transparent zero, just like we like it on the desktop version. Right click on the button and here we will duplicate it. We'll create two buttons. The bottom one will be for mobile view only and the top one will be for desktop and tablets so let's change the background color of the bottom one the mobile version to dark color just like so excellent and while we're still in the bottom button let's move to the advanced tab and here we have an option called responsive and now we will hide this button on desktop and tablets just like so and this button that we would like to display on desktop and tablets, we'll go to the responsive and we hide it on mobile, just like so. And that's how we rotate between the buttons. Now we can move to the tablet view and we can see this button, but can't see this one. Same with the desktop, we can see the original button, but not the mobile version. Excellent. All we have left to do is just to update the changes and go back to our live site, refresh it, make sure our desktop version look exactly the same. Now you can also use your smartphone to check your website or go back to the Elementor screen, click on this arrow here, and it will show you exactly how it look on this specific screen without all the hidden elements. Same for desktop or tablets. You, you can see both buttons now, but after clicking on this arrow, we minimize Elementor sidebar and we can't see the hidden elements. Excellent. So now we can see our website in every possible way and it's a great time to move forward and make our website perfect for Google as well. Guys, if you remember, I told you that this course is going to be one of a kind because I'm not only a graphic and web designer, but I'm also a web developer for over 10 years now. Now, what I would like to show you right now, it's something that others don't show you just because they don't know. And because I know how important it is for your website, I would like to share it with you. So the way you and other visitors see the website, it's not the same way that Google bots see your website. They measure your website on completely on a different level, okay? They measure it on site speed and content more than the way it looks. In this lecture, we will talk about image optimization, why it's important, and how it will affect your ranking. So as you can see in our booklet, image optimization is super important because your website will load faster and will rank higher. Click on that link and with this tool, we can test how Google see us. Copy your domain name and paste it here in this field and click on analyze. This is a Google tool to see what he sees, okay? 
and then we can fix the stuff we need. As you can see, after running a diagnose on our website and analyze it, our mobile score is 50, somewhere in the middle, and our desktop score is 70, which is higher, but again, not great. Why is that happen? Because our images are not optimized. This is one reason. Later on in this course, I'm gonna show you more reasons how to lift your score. Why is it not optimized? Because this image is big, right? We download it from Shutterstock or iStock or Pixabay, etc. Those are very high definition images. They are very heavy. And when visitor will try to visit your website from their smartphone, it will take them a lot of time to view your website because of those images. And that's why Google gave you a low score. Let's check really quick the image that we are dealing with. And we can see over here that this image size is over nine megabyte, which is a lot. In order to lift our score, we will need to change it and we will need to optimize our images. Let's go back to our booklet and we can use a plugin. Click on this GoPro button and it will take us to this website where we can download our plugin and fix that issue. Let's switch to monthly plans and here we can use the free version that will give us 100 images a month. For now it's enough, you can later on purchase extension or higher plan if you need more than that. Enter your email address and click on sign up. Excellent. This is our API key. We will need this key to connect the plugin to their server. So first of all, let's copy this API key. Click on login to your account. Here it's showing you on which plan you are on. Right now you are on the free plan. Later on, if you need more images, more than 100 images a month, you can upgrade to a different plan, monthly plan or fixed price plan, whatever you want. And if you lost your key, you can find it under the API keys link from the left side over here. There you go. And it shows you your API key over here. Excellent. Now let's go back to our WordPress website. We will need to access our plugin screen. So let's go to our dashboard. And here plugins, add new. And let's look for short pixel. Very nice. The first result on the left is the plugin that we need. Click install now and then activate it. Very nice. After we activated it, we can enter our API key in order to connect to the short pixel server. We can enter the API key over here in this field. Click on validate and you're ready to go. From now on, every image that you will upload to your WordPress website will be automatically optimized. You have five tabs over here. Under the general tab, I will recommend you to leave it as is. It's the best settings for the images and I use these settings with my websites. Under the advanced tab, we can check the WebP images. That's what Google would like to see. It's a format that take way less time to load. And here you have two options, whether to change it in the front end or the back end using the htaccess file. The htaccess file is recommended because it's going to be faster. So if you see the word can over here, choose this option. Otherwise, choose the first option. Excellent. Now scroll all the way to the bottom and click on save and go to back process. All the future images will be auto-optimized, but we need to optimize the images that we already uploaded. Even though that we only uploaded three images, it show us here 15 images to optimize. And that's because every time you upload an image to WordPress, the WordPress system create five version of this image automatically. It's creating small version, medium version, large version, and two more versions of the image you uploaded. So five different versions. 
what this short pixel is going to do, it's going to take each of the versions and it's going to combine the pixels with the same color. That way it will compress and minimize the image size. You won't be able to notice the difference. However, Google will be able to and it will give you a higher score. After the back finished, feel free to go to library. And here we can see all the images we uploaded to our website, right? So let's click on the first image and we can see that instead of nine megabyte, now it's reduced to 138 kilobyte. And this is amazing, right? It's a lot, a lot of memory saved, which is excellent. You can also switch to the list view if we'd like to re-optimize it or compress it even more. It's not recommended after the first compression because it's going to reduce the quality big time, but you have the option to do it for one image or to all of them if you desire. For me, one compress is enough. We can switch back to the grid view. Let's go back to our Google test tool. We can see that it's 1570. We're going to run the analyze again, and hopefully we will get a better score. And as we can see, the second time we run the test, our score increased drastically from 50 to 80 on mobile and from 70 to 90 on desktop. This is amazing. We still have some improvements to make, but I will show you more about it in the optimization section of this course. All right, so let's check this next section and see what we are going to learn. We will learn how to copy and paste text in Elementor, also how to create this nice divider and how to work with the image boxes. Also some padding and margin, etc. We have many things to do, so let's start moving. So let's go to our Elementor edit screen, scroll down, and here we will create a new section. Now you may be tempted to use this three columns section because we have three images boxes, but let's go first with the full width section. Into the full width section, we will drag our heading element. And now we can see that we need to change the content, the text. We want to have this text instead. So we can copy the text and we have two ways or two options where to paste the text. We can paste it here instead of the text in the visual editor, or we can also paste it in the text box under the content. And there is a difference. So when we paste it here in this text box, it will only going to paste the text without applying any style. However, if we paste it here in the visual editor, it will paste the text with CSS styles. As you can see, it looks exactly the same like in our demo website automatically. However, I don't recommend you guys to do it because if you will take different text from different websites, it's just going to look like completely different design from one text to another. Okay, so I recommend you to paste it in the content box and then just design it as you wish to match your website. All right, and we can see in our demo website that all of our titles are black. And on our website that we're building right now, our title is the default color, which is light blue. Let's change the default color to be black as well. Click on this icon and go to default colors. Here we will change the color palette of the first color to black or dark purple, and the second color to dark purple or pink, based on your needs, of course. Now click apply, and from now on, every time we will drag a title element, it will pick up the default color, which is black, just like so. Excellent, it will save us a lot of time. So after we did that one, let's start designing our title. Now, the first thing is obviously to center it. Under the style tab, we can change the size of it, like so, maybe 50 pixels. Now, if you decided that for this specific title you want a different color than black, you can always change it under the text color and it will override the default color. So if you want to have it blue, it will become blue. All right, so you can change it all the time. Uh, maybe one more thing that I would like to show you with the text is how to change the family font. Just click on family and change the font to any font that you would like. I really like the ABZ by Google. It's pretty cursive and very gentle. I'm gonna keep it that way. And the next 
element that we will drag into our section is this divider. I'm going to locate it and position it just underneath the title. We can see that it's taking the full width, 100% full width of the section. I'm going to reduce it to take only 10%. And I will also center it to be underneath the title. We can add an element to this section like star or text. I'm going to click on the icon and here you have many icons to choose from. I'm going to look for a dumbbell because it's a gym website. Insert and we can see our new dumbbell over there. When you're satisfied with the content, let's move to the style tab. Here we're going to increase the weight from one to two. Just like so. And also the gap. Right now it's 15 pixel top and bottom. I'm going to change it to two to reduce the gap between the widget and the title. Excellent. Now we can style it. All right. Maybe we can change the color of it. We can make it pink. Like so. And here under the icon tab, we can change the color to pink as well and also change the size maybe to 20 pixels, just like so. If you're happy, excellent, let's move forward. Now we can see we have three icon boxes and then another three icon boxes. How do we do that? Let's go to the widget and we'll drag this inner section. And this will allow us to create section inside a section. And if we need more columns, we can just duplicate one of the columns and now we have three of them. We can create as many as we wish, okay? Now let's look for the icon box widget and we will drag it to one of the columns, for example, the left one. We're going to design it and then we will duplicate it and drag it to the other columns. All right, let's start by designing and choosing the right icon because the first bullet point going to be 24 seven. Let's look for a watch or a clock. This one is a really nice one. We will copy the 24 seven gym text and paste it in the edit box, just like so. And now we can design it. We have few options for the icons. We can choose the stacked and it will be filled with a layer. We can make it square and not round, or we can choose frame and then the fill layer will be transparent, but we will have a border. Go with either one of those, doesn't really matter. You can also have the option to link it to a page, etc. And then go to the style tab. Here we can design the icon and we can style the content. Let's start with the icon first. We can change it to dark purple and the secondary color to pink. Doesn't look really good. I'm going to move it back to white. Now, we can also change other stuff like padding, size, etc. When we're moving to design the content, we can change the background color or the color of the text to purple, and that will match our icon. And when we're ready, we can create another box or just click duplicate. It will create another column and let's just delete the empty columns. We'll duplicate it once again, and we will delete the empty columns, and then we'll have three columns, three full columns, and all we have left to do is just to change the text or the content. For example, this is a personal trainers. We're gonna change the icon to a trainer or a user, something that will fit the bullet point. I'm going to change the title and of course the text after you will have text, just write it over there. Now we'll just duplicate this whole section, right? And then instead of three icons, we have six icons in a click of a button. And again, all you need to do is just change the content. Now, how about you created six icons and suddenly you decided to change the secondary color to pink or any other color, all right? Now, if you will duplicate the section one more time, it will hold the style, but you will need to change the content. However, what we can do right now, click copy and only paste the style you see right click on the element and it will paste only the style you can see the secondary color change but the content stay the same and that will save you a lot of time
Again, I want to keep the white color. I'm just going to copy the element I want and only paste the style and not just the normal regular paste. Okay, and that's another way to quickly design whatever you want. Again, full of great tips over here. Just make sure to try it yourself. After saving the changes, we can see that the section looking good. However, we have some changes to make, maybe space between the elements, and we can do it right now by dragging the spacer widget, not into the column, but in between these sections, okay? And paste it over here. And we can reduce it from 50 to 10 or any other number that you would like, just like so. Now we need to create some space above the title and we can do it with spacer as well. And that will create 50 pixels at the top. However, we have other options to use margin or padding. Okay, so let's click on the settings of the section, go to advanced tab, and here we have margin and padding. What is the difference between margin and padding? To explain it better, let's paint the section in a different color than white, and it will be easier to show you what is the difference between them. So when you change the margin to 50, it will create a space outside of the section. Okay, it will push the section down from outside of the section. However, when you give it a padding of 50, for example, it will push the elements down from inside the section. Okay, so you will see right now when I change it to 50, the gray section stayed at the top and it pushed the elements down from inside the section. It's very noticeable when you're creating a section with a different color than white, like we're doing so. However, if you're using a white background section, it doesn't really matter, but that's the difference between them. So I just gave 50 pixel top and 50 pixel bottom, and now I will bring it back to white color, like that, click update, revisit our website to make sure it's looking good, and look at that, the section looks amazing. Let's make sure it's looking good on mobile devices too. And it is, it's looking really good. The only thing we can do here in mobile just to eliminate and hide the spacer between the inside sections. So go to advanced and here hide on mobile. We can close the element or sidebar and see how it looks on mobile versions as well. Before we moving to the next section, I would like you guys to pause this video and go ahead, create the second section of your website. All right, so in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to use the Elementor history feature. So let's say you are coming back to your website after a day or a week, and you decide to change this section, you want to make it better. So you start making changes. Purposely, I'm making a lot of changes, and most of them are ridiculous changes, just to prove you a point, what is the history feature of Elementor. So we're going to change the icons, the spaces, colors, etc. Just like so. And let's say that's the result you came up with. And you update and recheck your website. And you see that you don't really like the new section. You prefer the old version better than this one. However, it's kind of hard to remember all the changes we made because we made a lot of changes and it will be almost impossible to track them back, right? And bring it back to what it was. For that, we have the Elementor history feature. We're going back to Elementor and we're clicking on this history icon and we will move to the revision tab. And here we have all the revisions and the one with the blue star is the active one. Now we can click on a different revision and see the changes we made. That's not the one, so we will keep moving down, activate this one, and we can see that this is the section that we like. We prefer this one instead of the new one. Therefore, we will click on apply, and we can see that the blue star move to the revision we chose, right? So this is the active one, and then click on update, and now you can start and re-edit the section again.
try again. What I'm trying to show you right now that you should treat Elementor like a sandbox. It's okay to make mistakes. You can always delete the section or you can go back to previous version that you like. All right, so in this lecture, we are going to build this brand recognition section. As you can see, we have eight company logos. Very nice. You probably saw this kind of section in many other websites. I copied the company logos from Zendesk.com. I really like the way they laid it out. I love the design. I copied that so we will have the same section on our website. I'm also going to show you a couple more examples from Monday.com and Slack.com, etc. Um, what I want you to understand and get from this section that you don't have to display brand name logos using this gallery widget. You can also display images that related to your business. If you have a coffee shop, you can show your coffee shop. If you have a gym, you can show your gym, etc. If you are a lawyer or accountant, you can show your office. We can really use this image gallery widget to display anything we want. This TFW gym, for example, is using the image gallery to display the facility, right? And by clicking on the image, you will see it open up in a pop-up box to display it in a larger form. You can really use the image gallery widget exactly as you want. You can display logos or images, whatever you want, you can do with it. But I'm going to use it just to, to show so company logos. So we can create new section like so. However, because our title and the divider, it's identical to this section, to the title and the divider, it will be smarter and faster just to duplicate this section and delete all the unnecessary sections from here that we don't need. And we're just going to keep the title and the divider. All we have left to do with the title is just to change the content to this text. So I'm going to paste it here in the text box, just like so. And now we saved a lot of time when we can start working with the image gallery widget. So scroll down and look for it. This is the one we are working with. Drag it to the desired location. And I see that we also have the spacer widget from this section that I forgot to delete. So I'm going to delete it now. Very nice. Now back to our image widget, click on this plus icon to add your desired images. And in our resources folder, we have all the logos that we are going to use in this section. So check them one by one or all together and drag them to WordPress in order to upload them to our website. Wait for the upload to finish. And all the images with the check mark, as you can see here, will be added to the gallery. So click on create a new gallery. And here you have the option to add caption to each of the images. And you can also rearrange their order by dragging them to where you want it to be. I'm just going to rearrange them to match our demo site. I will speed this process for you. Very nice. And when you are satisfied, click on insert gallery. We can see our gallery over here. However, the images are cutted because they are a thumbnail version. Let's change it to full and that will fix them. As you can see, we can see them fully. Great. We also have the option to change the columns from four to any other number that we would like. Right now it shows four in a row. We can change it to two and then it will show only two in a row. But four is good enough, just like so, because it will match the Zendex.com. And now we can move to the style tab. And what I want to do here is just to change the spacing from default to custom and just make it more spacious, right? To create more space between the images and we can see that they are kind of getting away from each other and it's look way better this way. If you added captions to these images, you have the option to design and style the caption in this tab. However, because we don't have caption, it's irrelevant for us. Excellent. So let's just make sure it's looking good on mobile as well. We will change the desktop view to mobile and we can see immediately that it's looking really good. The images are on top of each other. However, the title is too big and we didn't see that with this title because this title contain only four words and 
the new title is more than four words and is taking a lot of real estate. So let's change it by going to the style tab. And here in the typography, we can see that we're only changing the mobile size, right? So let's move it to 25 or 30. And because we want all the titles on our website to match desktop view and also mobile view, I'm going to copy this element and I'm only going to paste the style. And we will see that this title going to keep the text. However, it's going to apply the new style on it, just like so. And now it's looking good on every screen size. So let's click on update, go back to desktop view. The desktop looks perfectly fine. We will update it and we can see our new section over here. However, we have a couple more changes to make. We can see that whenever we're clicking on the image, it will open up as a pop-up. And this is a great option to have in certain situations like I showed you earlier with the gym, or if you are an artist and you would like to display your art. However, for this section, we don't really need it because it's only brand logos. And also this section has a different background, a light gray background. So let's change it. Let's go back to our gallery widget and here in the link we'll change it to none and now clicking on the image won't do anything which is what we want and we'll go to the style tab of this section and we'll change the background color to light gray beautiful we'll save the changes and we will revisit our home page refresh this page as well and we can see that it looks amazing and we can move forward to our next section our next section is one of my favorite. It's a beautiful section. We will learn so many things here. For example, how to create this fadings effect and also how to create testimonial slider when the images are kind of zoom in and the text popping up from the bottom and going to the top. This is very professional looking section and let's start by creating a new section. So let's choose a full width section. And into this section, we will look for slides. So type slides over here. You will find this widget and drag it to here. Beautiful. The first thing we can see, obviously, that the slider does not take the full width of the section. As I told you earlier, the section is limiting the width of the column inside of it to 1,040 pixels. To change it, let's go to the settings of the section. And under the layout tab, we will change it from box to full width. We can also see that there are 20 pixels padding to each side of the column. Top, right, bottom, and left. And because the default padding is 20 pixels for the columns. So click on the columns and go to the advanced tab and change it to zero. And now we can see that it's 100% full width without any padding and it's committed to be full width, which is what we want. Beautiful. Now we can start working with the slides themselves. So let's click on this element. And here we can see we have two options under the content. We have the slides where we can control each of the slides and the height of the slider and also slider options. So we will work with the sliders option first, but before that, let's increase the height of the slider to maybe 500 pixels. We want to make it big and noticeable, of course. Excellent, before we're going to work individually with each slide, let's open up the slider options and we'll go through the options here. So arrows and dots mean it will show you the arrows and dots so you can navigate between the slides. You can change it to show only the arrows and you can see the dots disappeared. You can show only the dots or you can show none and then the visitors won't have the option to navigate between the slides. The autoplay option is pretty straightforward. It's just going to autoplay it whenever the page is loaded. The pause on hover or interaction, it's also pretty straightforward. It will pause the slider whenever you hover your mouse on the slider. Autoplay speed, 5,000 mean five seconds. 5,000 milliseconds mean five seconds and that the time each slide going to stay on the screen before we're moving to the next slide. If you want to increase the number and let every slide be on the screen longer, just increase the number. The infinity loop means that after the third or the last slider, the first slider will come back again 
and that's how it will keep rolling. The transition right now it's slider. You can see that the new slide just slide into the screen from the right to the left. You can change it to fade and then the new slide just going to fade into the screen instead of sliding. The transition speed set to 500, which is half a second. And that's the time that will take to the slide to slide from right to left. And the last one in the content animation, right now you can see the text coming from bottom to top, as you can see. You can always change it to anything else, maybe like zoom, and you will see the text zooming into the screen, which is also really nice. I like the default settings, so therefore I'm going to keep it that way. And after you're satisfied with it, let's move on and work with each of the slides individually. So let's re-expand the slides option. We can see that we have three slides and we can add more by clicking on the add item button. Three is enough for us, so I will delete them both. Now let's expand one of the slides, the first one, and we can see three tabs underneath it. We have the background, the content, and the style. Let's focus on the background. We can see we have a purple background color. We can change it to any other color if you would like. Let's say like this baby blue. And if we set an image, it will overwrite the background color. Let's set this nice photo here of this woman lifting weights, insert media, and we can see the background image instead of the background color. Turn on this Ken Burns effect, and then the background image will zoom in toward us. You can also make it zoom out if you wish, like so. And because we would like to make the text pop up better, we should turn on the background overlay option, just like so. And change the background overlay to any color that you would like, maybe purple, and then just reduce the opacity so we can see our background image through the background overlay, just like so. Excellent, this looks really good. We can also change the blend mode to any other option. You can play with it and choose the one that you like the most. I will stick with normal for this slide. Now let's switch to the content tab because we would like to change the text. So let's switch to the content tab and here we will change the title and write down her name, which in this example going to be Jessica. In the testimonial text, we will just make it a bigger paragraph, a larger paragraph by pasting more text, just like so, and we can see the button text and the button link. If we would like to remove the button, just delete the button text and you won't see the button anymore. Beautiful. Now we can move to the second slide and create the second slide and later on design them. So first of all, let's upload the right image for the second slide. We will upload this guy. Insert image. Again, we have the option to change the size of it, to make it zoom in or out, and apply a background overlay. In our case, we will make it green. Doesn't look that good. Maybe we can change it to blue. And the blue looks way better, in my opinion, for this image, right? You can also change the blend mode over here. Find the one you like. Go for it. Make some experiments. Everything is fine. Let's move to the text or the content tab and here we will change his name to Danny. We also write a longer testimonial by pasting this nonsense text. And we're also going to delete his button because it's not a call to action button, it's a testimonial, right? So we don't need a button. We're just going to delete the text of the button and the button will disappear. Just like so. Excellent. I think you got a point. We don't need to create another slide. We'll just leave it as is and we will switch to the style tab in order to style the slides. All right. So we have a few options here, a few tabs, as you can see. Let's start with the slides. And the first thing is the content width. Right now it's set to 66%, but you can increase it to any other number or reduce it. I would recommend to keep it at 65 because it's going to keep the text in the center and it's very easy to read. We can also see in our demo site that our title, the name is very small and the text is larger. So let's 
close this option and open the title option. And under the typography, let's reduce the title size to something like that, maybe 20, 20 pixel, just like so. And we can also change the weight from default to 400. It will make it more thin, right? More gentle. And that's nice. Let's focus on the description right now. And we will change the text size under the typography to something like 30 pixels. And we can also change the style to italic because it's a testimonial and that's a quote. It will fit better. You can also change the family font to something that will fit a testimonial. You can browse between all the fonts they have. We can choose this one, for example. You can choose any other one, of course. And that looks way better. It starts to look really nice. And if you're satisfied, go for it. Just click on update. Otherwise, just keep playing with the design until you find the one you like. Excellent. Let's work on this fading effect, as you can see, between the section above it to our testimonial section. So let's go to the section settings screen. And here under the style tab, we'll open the shape divider option. We can apply it to the top or to the bottom. We will apply it to the top. And here under type, choose the one you like. I already know that it's the fan one. And we can change the color of it to any color that we want. But because we want it to integrate with the section above it, it will be better to match the color of the section above it, something like light gray. Now you can also play with the height and the width. And if you can't see any result yet, just switch this button to bring to front and then you will be able to see the fan we created. Now it will be easier to play with the width and with the height because we can actually see what we are changing. I'm going to reduce the height just like so to create a nice and gentle effect that will seamlessly integrate with the section above it. Excellent. Now we can close Elemental sidebar and see that it looks perfectly fine. It's really, really nice section and you did a great job, guys. Now we need to make sure it's looking good on mobile as well. Switching to mobile showing us that we have some work to do in order to fit it perfectly to mobile. We can see that the 65% content in the middle doesn't fit the, the mobile very well because it's very narrow. So go back to the style tab of the slider we will change it from 65 to 100. And we can see that we're only affecting it on the mobile version, which is good. That's what we want. And of course, we can reduce the text size in, instead of 30 to something else. Maybe 20, 22. Just make sure it's looking good with every slide. So just go to the slides and make sure it looks sharp with every slide. And it is. Now, another thing we can do is just to reduce the height of the slider from underneath the content tab. We can just reduce it here for the mobile version only from 500 to 300. Again, go through the slides, make sure it looks good on every slide. And when it is, you can pretty much save the changes. Let's go back to our desktop view. We can see that nothing changed here. Click update, revisit your website. Refresh it and look at that. This is a beautiful section. Amazing job. You nailed it, guys. Very good. Before moving to the next section, I would like you guys to pause this video and build this slider yourself. Okay, our next section is going to be the frequently asked questions. Let's scroll down in our demo page and we can see that it's very nice and very simple section. We have the title divider and inner section with two columns, one left and one right. Inside each of the column, we have four questions, expandable question that when clicking on the question, the answer will be displayed. How do we do that? Fairly easy, let's go back to our Elementor screen. We can create a new section or just duplicate this one, but because we don't want any background color, it will be smarter to duplicate this section. However, after duplicating this section, we will need to drag it all the way down and that may be a long and complicated process. We can click on the Navigator feature and here we can see all of our sections. Clicking on the section will take us to the section that we clicked on. As you can see, now we are working with the second section. We have the option to duplicate it here in the 
navigator tool and then drag it all the way down. That's way easier and quicker. Let's scroll down. We can see our new duplicated section over here. Now we can close the navigator feature and delete all the excessive sections or widgets that we don't need like so. Excellent. Let's change the title text to frequently asked questions. Copy and paste it again in the text box, just like so. Excellent. Now let's drag the column widget underneath the title here. We can see two columns, 50-50 each. Great. And now let's look for the toggle widget. We can work with the accordion or with the toggle, doesn't really matter. And we'll drag it to the left column first. We can see two toggles over there. We can add more. We need four in our example. So let's add just a couple more. Excellent. And here we have icon and active icon. What are they? So you can see that whenever you click on a question, it's become active and expand down. And when it's closed, you can see the arrow right icon. And when you open it up, you can see the arrow up icon. You can change it to any other icon. You can change it to this carrot if you want, for example. Obviously, it doesn't make much sense, but that's mean active icon. Of course, I'm going to bring it back to what it was, to the arrow up, because it makes more sense to our situation. Later on, we will duplicate this widget and drag the other one to the right column. But before that, let's change the questions. And here, after expanding the toggle, you can actually write down the question and the answer for each of the questions. Of course, with your business, with your website, you will actually need to think about the questions that your customers are asking you so you can answer the questions. Uh, but for our tutorial, for our case, I will save valuable time and I'm just going to write question number one, two, three, and four. And of course, you can answer each of the questions here in this text box. Now it's a good time to move to the style tab and we can see that we have the option to style the toggle, title, icon, and content. And we will start by styling the title. So let's close the toggle and expand the title. And now we will change the background color to purple and the color to white. Now check this one out guys. Only our icon changed to white and not our title itself, not the text. And even though that we want the text to change, it didn't change. Actually, it did change, but there is sometimes small bugs with Elementor, and I suspect that it happened because we changed the default color from blue to black, if you remember a few lectures ago. To prove you that it is working, just click on update and refresh your homepage, and you will see that the title text is actually white. You can also go back to the Elementor screen refresh this page, scrolling down, and you will see that it's actually white. So for next time, if you change something and you don't see it, just save the changes and refresh the page. All right, back to the style tab, into the title option, and let's change the active color of the expandable question. Right now it's white. We want to differentiate between the active and the non-active, and therefore we will change it to pink. Doesn't look the best. You can choose any other color, doesn't really matter, I'm just going to keep it pink for our example, just like so, perfect, now we can move to the next option, which is our typography, you have the option to change anything you want over there, the text size, the font family, etc, and here in the content option, I'm just going to change the background color to match the title. And here we don't have active or non-active because if you see the content, it means it's active. So we have only one option. And the text going to be white, so it will look better. And I'm also going to change the text size, like so. And we can also change the family if you want, or just the line height to create more space between the lines. There you go. Beautiful. When all questions are closed, we don't have... Too much separation between the questions and here we do have so to make separation let's just go back to the toggle option and here we will increase the space between and that will create margin it will push all the questions down from one to it to another just like so it will create more space between them and we can also play with the padding for the title 
I think the default padding for the title is 15 each side and we can increase it maybe to 18 make every title more spacious and bigger just like so beautiful we can see that the title changed back to black but that's fine we know how to solve it but right now let's just duplicate this element and drag one to the right column just like so of course we need to change the questions we need to change the answers etc and after you did so just update and refresh your page you will see that it's perfectly fine everything is working beautifully and function amazingly as well all right guys pause this video create your faq and let's move forward our next section is also a very cool section it's going to be the contact us section okay and we will learn a few things here how to use and set the map widget and also how to create a form with the form widget and at the end we will learn how to hook this menu item to this section and also this button here to the contact us section very cool we have many things to learn let's move forward and start by going to our element or edit screen and here we will need to create a new section so let's create two column section we won't duplicate the one above we're just going to create one from scratch just like so and the first thing we can see that there is no padding to our new section and all of our other sections has a padding as you can see it over here between the columns and the sections. so let's just copy the style and we will paste the style only on this section and we can see immediately that the padding was added to our new section now let's drag the map widget into here and the map widget is pretty limited we can set up the height of the widget just like so and we can also play with the zoom and zoom in or zoom out to the location exactly like that you can also of course change the location i'm just going to write a generic street one two three main street in new york excellent and again under the style you won't have too many options just maybe some css filters and that's it we can pretty much move forward to our right column and here we will need to have a title and a divider so let's duplicate the title and the divider and we'll drag them both to the right column just like so excellent and we have a couple changes to make here first of all we will need to change the text to contact us and align the text to the left exactly right and this one also we will align it to the left and we can see the 10% here it's very small because it's 10% only of the half of the page so let's just double the size to 20% and now it looks pretty cool pretty good and now let's add the text underneath the divider with our business details over here let's just drag a text editor excellent and here we can type in our content or we can just copy it from our demo site and we have two options we can either paste it here under the visual tab and it will paste it with the css rules as you can see it's already styled or we can switch to the text tab paste it here and then it will paste it without the style which is better because we can style it the way we want so let's just keep it unstyled and style it ourselves we're going to bold this location and office hours and phone number we can also go to the style tab change the text color to black and under the typography we can even reduce the line height to one and then all the lines will be closer to each other just like so and it looks really good i like it and the next thing we need to do just add a form that we'll talk about in the next lecture for now let's just update what we accomplished so far visit our website again and we can see that it start to come together pretty nice in the next lecture we will create the form and we'll hook up this section to our links okay so let's add our form widget back to our widgets list scroll down and you can find the phone widget over here just drag it to our right column just like so we can see from the get-go that our form contains three fields 
name, email, and message. And here under the content, we have six tabs to work with. We're gonna go through all of them in this lecture. Let's start with the first one, the form fields. All right, we can see right now that we have the name of the field outside the field and also inside the field, name and name. This one called label and this one inside called placeholder. Let's expand the first name option and we can see both options here, label and placeholder. If you will delete the placeholder text, so the text inside the field will be deleted as well. If you will delete the label text, so the text outside the field will be deleted, as you can see right now. But that's not smart because the name of the field is going to change to item number one. And that's going to be hard to refer to later on. So let's keep the label. If you want to hide the label, just turn off this label option here. And then you can see that there is no label outside the fields. That's a better solution. However, if you want to indicate which fields are required, you will need to enable the label and then to enable the required field option in order to show an asterisk next to the required field. But I don't want to display any of them, so I'm just going to turn off the required fields and the label options. Here we have the option to change the size of the input from small to any other option. I change it to large. And if you need to add more fields, in addition to our three ones that we already have, we can click on add item. And here we will have many options to choose from. Under the type, you will have many, many options. For example, if you choose the phone number option, it's a field that will accept only digits. I want to add a subject line, so I will go with the text option. I'm going to create a label with the text of subject. As I can see, the item number four changed to subject, and I'm going to write a placeholder subject so my visitors will see what they need to fill over here. Excellent. I will make it required in order to prevent spam messages, and I will reorganize it by dragging it up above the message, and now it's name, email, subject, and message. Perfect. It's starting to look really good. And now we can move forward and style our button to match our form. Okay, let's just close the form fields and expand the buttons option. And we can see that the buttons option is pretty straightforward and very similar to the form fields. First, let's change the size to large to match the other fields. You can also change the element width to any other number than 100. Or you can change it in a different way by bringing it back to 100 and just choose the alignment of the button. Okay, for example, left, center, or right. If you want it full width, just keep it justified. In the step buttons, we're gonna touch later, so you don't need to worry about it now. Right now, it's a one-step form. When we'll create multi-step forms, we will talk about it. And here you can change the button text to submit, send, schedule appointment, or any other text that you would like. Now let's minimize the button tab and expand the actions after submit. And here you will decide what happened after submitting the form. Right now, it will send us an email. And every action you will choose, you will see the tab added underneath the action. If, for example, you would like to add the email address of the sender to your ConvertKit account, we will do it later on, you can choose the ConvertKit account and you will see the new ConvertKit tab appears underneath the action. If you delete it, you will see that the ConvertKit tab was deleted as well. And now I will delete the email and you will see that we don't have email tab anymore. But because we would like to receive the emails, I will bring back the email option and now we can see the email tab came back again. And now the fun part begins. So let's close this section and open, expand our email section. And here we have few options to work with. We have the two, subject, message, from email, from name, and reply to. Excellent, let's start with the first option, which is two. Here is your email address where you would like to receive the messages, right? This is our business email address because that's how we register WordPress with, and that's great. Here in the subject line, you have few options. The first option is just to leave it as fixed text, new message from Good Body Gym or whatever your business name is, and that will be useful, for example, when you have many forms. If you have one form, to schedule appointment, you can change the subject line to new message from schedule appointment form and then organize it in a schedule appointment folder inside your email box. If you have another form to order a product, you can call it new message from 
order a product form and then organize it in a different folder in your email account called order products folder. However, if you only have one form and you would like to dynamically generate the text to match the subject line, let's go up to our form fields option. Here we will expand the subject line and under advanced we'll copy the shortcode of this subject line. Just like so. Go back to our email tab and we will paste the shortcode here instead of the subject line and that will match exactly with the form subject as I will show you later. Inside the message text box you have all fields and that's good that will show you all the fields of the form just leave it that way and in the form email it doesn't really matter what what email it is over there it's not the email that we are going to respond to anyway however if you would like to enter the customer email just go to the email field copy the shortcode and paste it over here again it doesn't really matter you can even leave and write an email over there that doesn't really exist You already know the trick. We will need to change the first name to the customer name. So let's go back to the form fields, into the name, into the advanced tab, and copy the name shortcode and paste it over here. And in the reply to option, just make sure you're replying to the email shortcode or the email field. It doesn't really matter, it's the same thing. Excellent. Now let's save the changes and test the form make sure it's working properly and we can actually receive messages from the contact form so first of all let's click update beautiful job we'll refresh our home page to make sure we have our contact form and now i would like to view the contact form as a visitor and i'm going to use the incognito window for that because i'm not connected through incognito i'll go to our website scroll all the way down to access the contact form there you go i will fill it with some random information and here i will enter my personal gmail account just to mimic like a normal visitor most of your visitors are going to use gmail or hotmail or yahoo etc subject line i'm just going to write a subject line this is a subject line And here I will type in the message body. All right, I will click send. As a customer, I get a green feedback over here. The phone was sent successfully. And hopefully if we set it up right, it should work. So let's navigate to our email address, mail.ourdomainname.com forward slash webmail. And I can see immediately that we received an email. The subject line was generated automatically along with the from name. And I can see all the fields of the form is over here. Excellent. And when I click reply, I can see that I'm replying to the customer email. Over here, you can see the name and the customer email is private Gmail account. All right. So the form is working perfectly fine. And we can keep talking about the other parts of the form. So let's close this email tab. We finalize everything over there. And let's expand the step settings. And this is pretty simple. Not much to do here. It's related to the multi-step forms and we'll talk about it in the next lecture. And here under the additional options, also there is not much to do. You can turn on this option and then change the default messages that your customers will get after sending the form. You can type in, I will get back to you in 24 hours, etc. I like the default messages and I'm going to leave it that way. If you would like to style the form, go to the style tab. Here you already know what to do. You have the option to style any part of the form let's focus on the button for a second we're just going to change the background color to match our brand purple maybe pink i like the purple more i'm going to change it back to purple and again you already know how to change the sizes the colors the background color etc now all you have left to do is just to save the form excellent job guys in our next lecture i will show you how to create multi-step forms and also how to hook the contact form section to our buttons all right, so in this lecture, we'll talk about multi-step contact forms. Many insurance companies using this technique in their quote forms, they don't want to intimidate you with long forms, so they break down the form to multi-steps, as you can see here in the general website. This form has many steps, info, drivers, vehicles, quote, 
and after filling the info you will move to the drivers tab and so on so let's close this window and build a multi-steps form with elementor okay so let's back again to the content tab and here under the form fields we will first build the form as a full and then we will break it down to steps that's with my experience the best way to build multi-steps form the first step of the form will be these four questions regarding their personal information and I'm going to add now two more questions regarding their experience level. So this question will be a radio button option. I will provide them with three options to choose from and I will call it fitness level. And the three options I will provide them with are beginner, intermediate and advanced. Now you can see that the radio buttons option doesn't have a placeholder option for obvious reasons. And in this case, it may be better to enable our label feature. So our customers and visitors will know what we are asking them. And now you can see the label added to the form. It also added to the other fields. So you can just delete the placeholder if you don't want the text to be double. Okay, excellent. So now let's just add another field to our experience step. And this time we can ask them what's their preferred time to train. Okay, so I'm going to choose this option to be checkbox so they can select multiple options. And I will label it training time. The three options will be morning, noon and night. I can see this section added to the bottom and the answers are one under another. I can also enable this option here and the answers are going to be one next to each other. They will be in line with each other, which is really nice. So my form is pretty much ready. I have two steps here. This is the first step, the first four questions. And the second step is this bottom two questions. To split the form, we will add a new field and we will drag it to the location where we would like to split the form. As you can see this empty field over here, it's just between the four questions and the bottom two. And I will change its type to step. And after you did, you can see it immediately painted with gray background, as you can see. Now, when you scroll up to the top of the form, you can see the steps bar added above the form. And also this item one step was automatically added above the first field. Okay, so because item six is already open, let's start with this one and we will change the label or we're actually going to enter a label saying experience level. And you can see the label added underneath the second step in the process bar. And now we'll add a label to the first step. We can call it personal information. Great. So now we have label for the first step and for the second step, we can also change the text of the next button of the first step or the second step. As you can see here, we can write move forward. But again, the default next is perfectly fine, but you can definitely change the text for each of the steps. And that's amazing. And that's why I love Elementor so much. We also have steps tab. You can see it here. And with this tab, we can control the process bar. For example, it's showing text and numbers. You can change it to numbers or only text, etc. And the shape from circle to rounded, square, etc. And of course, under the style tab, you can style any part of the form. You have steps part over there where you can control the colors, the size, the font family, etc. Now let's just save the form. And we'll test it one more time from incognito again. So let's go to our website, scroll all the way down to our form and we can see our multi-steps form. Let's just fill this first step. I won't really send the form. I know it's working. I just want to make sure it's moving me to the next step. So I'm just going to fill a demi text over there. Doesn't really matter. And when clicking on next, I can see that it took me to the second step. And here they 
asking me about my experience level and I have previous button or send button. Beautiful, so the form is working perfectly. In our next lecture, we'll finalize our contact form section, make sure it's looking good on mobile and hook it to our menu. In this section, we will finish the contact us section. All right, first thing we need to do is obviously refresh our homepage. And the first thing we see that we need to make a bigger gap between the columns, just like we have here. And we could also extend the height of the map to take the full height of the form that we have. As you can see in our site, it doesn't fit right now. Okay, so let's start by creating the gap between the columns. We can go to each of the column individually into the advanced tab and then change the default padding of each of them. For example, we can give right padding to the left column and left padding to the right column, and that will create separation between the columns. However, it's not recommended, it's a long process, and there is an easier way to achieve it. All right, so let's revert back to what it was. We will use our history feature option that I already showed you a few lectures ago by clicking on this history icon over here, and then choose a different version of this section. I'm going to choose this one. I can see that we reverted it back. Now we still have the default padding and the easier way to achieve the gap is just go to the section settings and here in the columns gap option, change it from default to extended or wide or wider. You can start with wide and see what it looks like or if you need wider, just change it to wider and you will see that the gap got wider. Great, so now we can see that there is a nice gap between the two columns. I love the way it looks. And now we will need to extend the height of the map to match the height of the form. So let's just play with the height over here. Just like so, we can set it to be 760. And it looks perfectly fine. I love this section. It's a very professional section. And now we will switch to mobile view to make sure it's looking good there as well. We can see that it's looking really good. However, we can just decrease the map height maybe to 200 pixels we don't need more than that in the mobile view just like so and now we can see that it looks perfectly fine in every screen size excellent job now we're done with the contact us section and we will need to hook it up with our menu and our hero section at the top okay how do we do that we'll go to our section settings into the advanced tab and here we have the option to give this section a CSS ID. So you can call it anything you want. I will make it descriptive enough so I will know what it is and I will call it contact-us. It's also case sensitive. So whatever you write here, just make sure you remember it in a second. Click on update. And after you did it, go to your hero section, scroll all the way up into the button. Excellent. Now inside the link field, we will leave the hashtag as is and we will write the ID of the section contact dash us just like so. And we're also going to hook the mobile button into our contact us section as well. Excellent. And now let's click on update. Beautiful. Now we will refresh our homepage, click our button at the top and make sure it's working. First of all, we can see that all the changes we made took effect, scroll up, click on the schedule appointment, and it will scroll you down to this contact us section. Perfect. Now let's hook this contact us menu item into our new section. To do that, let's go back to our dashboard, into our menus screen under appearance. Here we can see the contact us as a page, but it's not a page, it's a section inside our homepage. So we will delete this one and we will expand the custom links option. Here in the URL, we need to type in where this section exists. And this section live inside our homepage. The link of the homepage is this link. And to access this custom section, you will need to add hashtag and the ID of the section, just like so. And the link text will be contact us. Click on add to menu. You can see that it was added here at the bottom. And now save menu. Great. Now let's just make sure it's working so we can close the screen and refresh our homepage. 
Now we will click on the contact us option from the menu and we can see that we've been redirected to the section, which is excellent. Now let's go to a different page of the website. Let's say the about us. And from there, we will also going to click on the contact us link. We can see that it brought us back to the homepage and into the desired section. In the next lecture, we will create our website footer. So in this lecture, we will create our footer and the footer is the last section of each page. And as you can see on our demo site, it's a very nice section with some links to our social media channels. And on our site, we don't have a footer yet. So instead creating a footer for this homepage specifically, we will create a template and load it on every page. So go back to the Elementor screen and click on exit to dashboard. And here we will go to templates and then add new. From this drop down options choose footer and give it a name and click on create template here we will have many pre-made designs that elementor created for us so we can use to speed up the process if you see anything that you like like this one you can click on the view icon and then you will see how it looks like if you would like to try it on your website click on insert and it will load into your website as you can see here this is a great footer, but it contains many links and we don't have so many links on our website. So it may not be the best choice for our scenario. So I will delete these two sections. And to go back to the templates screen, just click on this folder icon and it will bring you back to all the templates you can choose from. I really like this one. It's very minimalist and simple. Therefore, I will insert it. And this is a great starting point because it's a beautiful footer and we don't have too many things to do here. What we can see is these social icons that for some reason doesn't appear. Just click on it and it will load the icons. Here you can see on the left side all the icons you have and you have the option to add more social networks if you want. Just expand the network and you will be able to insert the link of your channel. Now you can go to the style tab, of course, style any part of the social icons. I'm just going to change the hover color of the icons from green to something that will match our brand like pink or purple, just like so. And we can also change the hover colors of the button from green, from the default green to pink or purple. So let's go to the button and here under hover, we'll change it to pink and maybe the text we can change to white. Just like so. This is again just the starting point. You can do whatever you want with it. You can reorganize the elements. As you can see, I'm just going to drag this one underneath the form. If you want, you also have the option to add elements, right? Let's say if you want to add a button, for example, or links or whatever, you just play with it and add whatever you want. You can change the style, the design, the advanced uh, tabs, and everything. You can pretty much do whatever you want with a template. This is just a starting point again. Excellent, when you're satisfied with the result, don't forget to click publish. Here they will ask you where you would like to display it, add condition to display it in the entire site, click save and close. And now when you refresh your homepage, if we did it correctly, it will show underneath this contact us section and it is, it's beautiful. Now it will appear on every page and this is a great, great footer. And now it's your turn guys, before moving on to the next lecture, just pause it and build your footer. In this lecture, we will start building our About Us page and we'll talk about the default Gutenberg blocks. So in our About Us page, we only have the page title at this moment, along with the header and the footer that will appear on every screen, right? And our demo site, the About Us page, we have really nice About Us page with the coach image on the left and the text on the right and the order kind of change later on. I took inspiration from this website when I did my research about gym websites. I follow other gym websites and I really like this design and I decided to try and mimic it. And as you can see the result is pretty similar and we of course we can always make it better but I just want to show you that you can mimic and create any design. Excellent so let's close this website and go back to our About Us page, click on Edit page at the top. 
we will edit this page with Elementor. However, I want to show you how to use the default Gutenberg blocks. Now, most of the time you probably won't use them, but I do want you to have a general clue how to use them. They are very useful for blog posts, but not really for pages, and I will show you why now. So let's start with the most basic block, which is the paragraph block. Automatically, it starts with a paragraph, as you can see here, and whenever you type something, let's say, hey, I'm a paragraph, automatically whatever you type becoming a paragraph okay and after you type something you can see the paragraph menu appears on top of it so you can actually make the word bold or even link the word to any other page etc so this is the paragraph block as you can see here of course we have the option to add other blocks and different kind of blocks to see the full list of blocks just like elementor widgets we will need to click on this plus icon here at the top left corner by clicking on it, you will be able to see all the Gutenberg blocks that came pre-installed with WordPress. You can expand any of the tabs to see more blocks. So for example, if you want to add a cover image, just add the cover block. Choose the image that you would like to create as a cover. You can also type the text inside this block. I'm the coach. And that's how nice and slowly you can come up with the results that you want. When you're done, just click update, visit your page and see what you came up with. So as you can see, in order to really get the sense of what it looks like, we need to save the changes, revisit the page, see if we like it and move forward from there. Unlike Elementor that everything happened in front of us, which make it easier. Okay, so if you would like to hide the title and expand the content to take full width, we already know what to do. We'll go back to the document tab and here under page template, we'll change it to element of full width, update the changes, revisit the page, refresh it, and we can see that the title is not there and the content take full width of the page, which is excellent. And now we can keep moving forward and add more blocks. So we can click on this plus icon here underneath the previous block. And of course, choose a different block. Let's say this quote. And here you can type in your quote, whatever you want. Again, click update, revisit the page and see what you came up with. And as we can see, the quote is styled differently than the paragraph. So there are some CSS rules that apply to the different kind of blocks and that's how we're creating a different design, which is nice. WordPress made a great progress in the last few years. I am a WordPress developer for the last 10 years and I started when it was no blocks, no element or whatsoever. It was just pure HTML. So definitely they making a great progress. That was just the tip of the iceberg regarding Gutenberg blocks. We will talk about it later on more when we'll create our blog post because it's going to be more relevant to the blog post. But I just wanted to show you that there is an alternative to Elementor and you can just use the default editor. Not recommended for pages, but possible if you want. Now I'm just going to delete all the blocks, click on update, and because we like Elementor more, we will click on edit with Elementor in order to open the Elementor edit screen and create the page with Elementor. Okay, so let's start with the first section. We can see that we have a section with two columns, the image of the coach on the left, and the text or the description of the coach on the right with a nice background behind the text. All right, so let's go back to our Elementor edit screen. And here we will need to create a section with two columns. So let's choose this one. To the left column, we will drag an image, the image widget over here. And we will choose our coach to be on the left side. This guy over here, just like so. I'm going to check it and click insert media excellent i will save our progress and when closing the element or sidebar we can see that this column doesn't take the full width and we know that it's limited to 1040 pixels inside the section so let's go to the section settings and instead of the box we'll change it to full width now we're taking the full width minus the padding that each of the columns have the default 20 pixels for each column so we'll go to the columns advanced tab and we'll change it to zero because we don't want any padding and we will copy this 
style into the second column. And to prove that it's working, we can just go to the advanced tab and see that it's zero. So both columns have zero padding and it's taking full width from left to right. Now let's drag the necessary elements to the right. This is the footer, so we don't really need it. I can close the window. And to the right column, I will drag the divider. Also, the title widget. And under the title widget, we will drag a text editor, just like so. The first thing to do is to align the content in both columns to the center. So we'll go to the section settings and we'll change the vertical align to middle. So now we can start styling each of the elements individually. And let's start with the divider. We don't need to make it 100%, 30% will be just fine. And of course, let's center it. We also have the option to add text or icon. If you decided to add text, just type in the text here that you would like to appear inside the divider, as you can see. But I will stick with the icon and we'll change it to dumbbell. Great. Now I can also see in our demo site that the gap between the divider and the title is smaller. So inside the style tab, I'm going to change it and reduce it to two pixels, which is the minimum, just like so. And I can also change the text, the color, the size, etc. Of course, you already know that, and we don't need to spend too much time on that one. Let's move on to the title element. And here we will type his name and we will center it just like so. And you already know that you can change anything you want regarding the text, size, font, family, colors, etc. I don't want to focus on that one again. Let's move on to our paragraph. And this is something that I would like you to know. If you remember right, at the beginning of this lecture, we changed the default settings of the section instead of taking only 1040 pixels to take the full width of the page. That means that each of the columns will take 50% of the page, right? And because each of the elements takes 100% of the width of the column that it's in, there is a chance that this paragraph will be very, very long on big screens. Therefore, it will be very smart to limit the width of this paragraph to take about maybe 600 pixels. And that will look good on every screen size. So let's go to the advanced tab of this paragraph and I'm going to teach you something very cool. Here in the positioning tab, change the width to custom and here we will set the paragraph to be no more than maybe 600 pixels or 575 pixels. And that will guarantee that it will look good on every screen size. Now we can see that it's only 575, but it's starting from the left side of the column. So let's center the element inside the column by going to the column settings. And here we'll change the horizontal align to center. And we can see that the element is limited to 575 pixel. It's in the center of the column. And even if we're viewing it from a larger screen, let's say we minimize the elemental sidebar, we can see that the paragraph didn't change. It's still 575. It doesn't take the full width of the column, which is great. It will look good on every screen. Excellent. So now let's just center the text inside the element by clicking on it. We'll go to the content tab. In this case is the style tab. And here we will center the text. We can see that the text got centered inside the element. All right, back to our demo site. We can see that we have a nice background behind this column. And we can set the background column to be for the whole section. But because we already have an image here on the left side, we're just going to set it up for the column. So inside the style tab, change the background color to classic and set up your background image. We have it here in our resources folder. Just going to drag it and set it up. Looking great. We can change the position to center center in order to center the background image, as you can see, like so. And that looks really good. I'm going to save our changes and refresh the about us page now in the next lecture i will show you how to create the second section which is very similar how to flip between the columns and why we need to delete the coach photo and set it up as a background image in this lecture we will talk about background images position we can see in our demo site that the background image here it's more zoomed in and 
the athlete is positioned differently than our site that we're building right now. Okay, so let's go back to our website. Here we will, instead of just deleting this image, we will duplicate this section. I will create this section just underneath the top section and then we can compare between them. First thing, let's just delete the image widget and immediately we can see that the height of the section dropped. Now the section height is set by the right column. I think the first thing to do just to increase the height of the section. So we'll go to the section settings and here under height, we will change it to mean height and we can set it to be maybe 500 or 550 pixels. After we change it, we are facing a new issue. The section is tall. However, the columns inside the section are in the middle of the section and they don't take the full height of the section. If you remember that earlier we set it up to be in the middle over here and if we will change it back to the default, which is top, it won't solve the problem because now it starts from the top but it's still limited to the height of the right column which is the highest column between the two. What we would like to have is both columns to take the full height of the section and all the elements inside the columns to be centered. We can achieve that by changing the column position to stretch then both columns will take the full height of the section and the elements will be centered inside. After you did so, let's go to the style tab of the left column and set the background image to be this coach. And now we can see that after setting up as a background image, unlike an image widget, we have the option to play with the position of the image, where we want it to be, how we would like it to be displayed. We have way more options. For example, here in the size option, we can change it to cover or change it to custom size. Right, we can switch it to pixels and then we can decide that the background image will be bigger than what the columns can actually handle. And that's how we're zooming in into the image. As you can see, this coach is way more zoomed in than the image above it. Okay, it may not be a big difference with, with this image, but in your WordPress journey, you will notice that sometimes you will need to use it. You can also set it back to default and here inside the position, we can change it to custom and that will be very nice if we'd like to display the image really, really big. And then we can play with the position on the X and Y axis and see what it looks like and position it in exactly as we wish. So again, you have many, many options to play with it. You can style it and display it however you want. I'm bringing it back to this option. And now I can just see how it looks on the full screen. And of course, I also need to make sure it's looking good on mobile and tablets. And therefore, I'm going to switch to mobile. So we have some changes to make. We need to position the image better so we will see the coach. And we can also make the column just a little bit taller so we can see more of the picture, more of the image. So let's start by positioning the guy better. So here we'll go to position or size. Any of them doesn't really matter. You'll need to play with it with your own image, of course. I'm going to change it to top center or even custom and just play with a position like so. And if we would like to make the column higher, we're just going to drag a spacer element into this column and make the spacer bigger, something like that. Now, of course, the spacer element not going to affect the way it looks on tablets or desktop because the right column, the one that set the height, is taller than the spacer height. So the spacer widget only going to affect the mobile view. Now on tablet we can also adjust the position by moving it left to right. Again we are dealing with the tablets view so it's only going to affect on tablets. And as you can see the spacer element will not affect the tablet view or the desktop view because it's shorter than the right column that set the height. Let's go back to our desktop. We can see that it's looking good on desktop as well. And now we can delete the first section. We're going to keep only the second section, update the page, refresh it, and it's looking amazing. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to reverse the order of the columns on mobile and also how to animate the elements. All right, so now we need to create two more sections, right? And then we should change the middle section for the image to be on the right and the text to be on the left. And we'll create this kind of design in our site. 
So right now we lacking two more sections. So go back to the elemental screen and we will duplicate this section twice. Just like so. The first section and the third section are just fine. The image is on the left, which is good. But we will need to change the order of the second section and move this column to the right. Just like so. And that's great. And now we will just switch this image and change it to a different coach. You can find it in our resources folder. Okay, great. So we can see that it looks really good. Of course, we need to change the name from Danny to her name, Jessica. And it's coming up really nicely on desktop and tablets. We can see we have three sections. The first and the third one are with the image on the left, text on the right, and the second section is image on the right and text on the left. As you can see, on the big screen, looks amazing. However, on mobile, it won't look exactly as we wish because the column on the left go on top the right column. So it's column of the left, then column of the right, then column of the left, and then column of the right again. And that will create image text, text image, and not image text, image text, as we would like to show it on mobile. You can see here the image, and then the text, and then the second section comes with the text first, and then the image. So the first and the third sections are good, but we will need to reverse the order of the second section. First, let's fix the background position of the second column, just like so, playing with the X and the Y. And now we will go to the section settings into the advanced tab. And here inside the responsive tab, we will reverse the order of the columns on mobile view by enabling this option here. And now we can see that they switch and now it's image text, image text, image text. And that's beautiful. That looks really good on mobile. We can change to tablets and see that it looks exactly like desktop. So we don't need to reverse it over there. We just need to adjust the background position to fit better. There you go, back to desktop. And now I would like to show you how to create animations for the elements. So we can click on every element that we would like. Let's say we would like to animate this divider. So clicking on it, we can go to the advanced tab and here to the motion effects. However, if we would like to animate the whole column, we can just apply the animation to the column. For example, we'll go with this column first into the motion effects. And let's say we would like it to slide in from left to right. So over here, we're going to look for the sliding option. Slide in left, just like so. We'll go to this column, the right column, and we'll set the slider to come from right to left. And they will meet in the middle, just like that. And let's set another animation for the second section. The left column will, I will just give something random, doesn't really matter. And for this one, I'm also going to choose something random just to show you that it's possible to do whatever you want with it. I'm not a big fan of animations, but if you want to have it, you can do it by applying the motion effects. And after refreshing the page, you can see the animation and everything looks beautiful and we can move forward to our next section. So by looking at the menu, our next page is going to be the blog page. So let's navigate to the blog page and this page will auto generate and display all the blog posts we have on our website. The newest one at the top and the oldest one at the bottom. So before we creating blog posts, let's talk about what are they and what are the differences between blog posts and pages. So here in the booklet, we can read and see the differences. WordPress posts have an official publication date and are displayed by date on your site's blog page, as I described you a second ago, and they are mostly used for articles. Pages, on the other hand, do not have a published date and are meant for static, timeless content. Two common examples of content that should be a page are the site's contact or about pages. Let me give you some real life example. So we have this website called Medium here. I'm sure you know about it. And most of what you see in front of you is a page. Okay, so this is the home page. The subscribe, write, sign in, they are all pages. And we can see more pages at the bottom in the footer. 
and those are pages because they are timeless. They are relevant to this website anytime you will visit the website. They are not time-related content. Unlike their blog posts, I think we can access it through the subscribe link. When you enter one of the articles that they have, let's say we'll choose this category and we will navigate into this article, you can see that it's article full of content. You can see that there is a public date and you can see the author name, some share buttons, etc. Here is the full article, the full content. We can see the quote here. And again, they have many, many elements that remind us articles and remind us a book or blog post. And this is exactly a blog post. It has categories, the option to leave comments, etc. So those are posts, okay? Another example will be from plugins for WP. The homepage is a page, of course, about us, FAQ, unlimited downloads. These are all pages. And we can click on the blog and it will take us to our blog page where we can enter each of the articles that they have over there by clicking on continue reading. And here we will see all the elements that indicates that is a post. Okay, we can see the auto name, share buttons, the option to leave comments, etc. And when going back to the blog archive page, we can see that all the posts display in a chronicle order when the newest post at the top and the oldest at the bottom. And after 10 posts, we have the option to go to the second page to read another 10 posts and then to the third page, etc. Okay, so let's go back to our website and we can see that this archive page displays all the blog posts we have on our website. When we install WordPress, this Hello World post came as a default post, all right? So we need to delete it first. Let's go to the post and then all posts. And here we can see a list of all the posts we have. Before adding more posts, let's just click on trash for this hello world default post. Excellent. Now we will refresh our archive page. We can see that it reacts to our post lists. And because we have no post, this page is empty, which is good. So let's add a blog post by clicking on add new. And the first thing that you see, obviously, it's to add a title. How we would like to call the post. What is this post about? All right, and because this is a gym website, I would like to create a blog post, how to back squat. So the title of the post will be how to back squat. Excellent. Now, before we moving on to the blogs, I would like to show you that we have two tabs on the right, document and blog. The document tab is related to this blog post as a whole, everything related to this document and the blog is empty right now because we didn't select any block. The second we click on a block, we will see all the options that related to this block. This is a paragraph block, so we can change the settings, we can change the advanced, etc. If we will add or use a different block, such as the quote, we will see that all the options under the block change to fit the new block we are dealing with. So the style going to contain different set of parameters or different set of options, okay? It's important to know that the block is related to the block you are on right now or you are dealing with right now. Okay, so let's just fill this blog post with some demi content. I have this widget over here that will generate demi text. I'm going to paste it. And after you pasted it, you can see that each of the paragraph received its own block. It's living in its own block. So now let's say I would like to add a quote between these two paragraphs. So I'm going to click on the plus icon and choose the quote block. And here I will type the quote. For example, back squat is the best thing in the world or whatever you want. Type the name of the author, which is John Doe. So now we have a great blog post, about 10 paragraphs and a quote. You can also add more blocks into this blog post. You can also edit this blog post with Elementor by clicking on edit with Elementor. However, in my opinion, using Elementor to create blog posts, it's an overkill just because we're mostly using paragraphs and we don't need a crazy design. All right, here under the document, we have few tabs. Let's focus on the category first. And we can see that we have the option to add categories. The category that you will choose must be related to the article, of course. So you will need to decide for yourself what is the best category for your article. I'm just going to Google to see what other websites are doing. So let's take this example for our category. We can see that this article is under the strength category. I'm going to use it for our blog post as well. 
And here under categories, I'm just going to type in strength and click on the add new category. And after you edit it, you can see that the category automatically checked and now this article is under this category, which is great. That's what we wanted. Here under tags, we have more options to describe what is this article about. Let's go back to our Google article and we can see that this article has these three tags over here. You can enter as many tags as you want. I'm just going to use those tags as inspiration. So let's say fitness. We can also write squat, back squats, something that will be descriptive enough for this article. The next one is the feature image, and this feature image will represent our blog post. Also, when people will share this blog post on the social media, how would you like it to be displayed? What is the image that will represent the post? I created a really nice featured image. You can find it in the resources folder. I will also going to teach you in later lecture how to create beautiful featured image for yourself. We can see that it's cut it over here, but don't worry, it's all good. That's the way it's just showing here. And here under excerpt, it's not mandatory, it's optional. And that's the excerpt that will be displayed under your blog post. For example, if we'll go to plugins for WP again, here in the blog archive page, you have a paragraph that will be displayed here just before clicking on the continue reading. If you don't type any excerpt, it will just choose and display the first 100 words. Okay. However, you have the option to type in custom one. And here under discussion, you have the option to allow comments or disallow them. Great. And the last tab will be the post attributes. And here you will have the option to choose a template. We already talked about the templates. Right now it's set to default. And the default is very minimal. In the next lecture, we will change the default to display the post in a better way. And I will show you exactly how to do so. All right. Now click publish. And then you will have the link to visit your post for the first time. So let's see what it looks like. And we can see our blog post. Very basic, very minimal, not too much style. But that's okay, we will change it in the next lecture. And now let's revisit our blog archive page. Once again, we will refresh this page and we can see our latest blog post appear at the top of this screen with our featured image, the blog title, and excerpt underneath the featured image. The style here of this page is also very basic, but that's okay. We will change this page as well. And for now, I'm just going to pause the video. I'm going to create two more demi posts and I want you to do the same. Create two more posts on your website. Okay, so I created two more blog posts, how to do push-ups and how to train for your first marathon. And now we have three blog posts. Let's visit the push-up blog post and like the other ones it's very minimal not too much style and it doesn't look really good if we'll be honest in our demo site we can see that each of the blog posts it's very very pretty it's very stylish you have many elements in this blog post that make it very easy and nice to read and we would like to create similar style similar design on the website we are working on right now so how do we do that we already know that we can change each and every post with Elementor. However, it will be smarter and better and quicker to create a template and then apply it to all the blog posts. Okay, we already did it with the header and the footer. So let's do it with our blog posts. Let's go to the back end and then to templates, add new. Here we will choose single, then post. And we have the option to give it a name. I'm just going to call it single post and click on create template. Elementor already created pre-designed templates for us. And I think it will be very smart to use any of the design that they created for us. You can browse between them. You can find the one with a sidebar or without a sidebar. Look for the one that you like the most. Again, you can also click on the visit icon and see what it looks like. As you can see, we have this blog post here that is with no sidebar. And we have this one with, with the right sidebar. We have some with left sidebar and left sharing buttons, etc. You have many options over there. I really like this design. Therefore, I'm going to choose it by clicking on insert and click yes.
Great, so we can see that the new template was loaded into our website and the elements were auto-generated and dynamically generated based on the blog post that we are previewing right now. And this is the latest blog post, how to do perfect push-ups. So we can see our blog content and also we can see our feature image and the title. If we go to the widgets list, we can see that we can add more widgets that related to the post, such as post title, post excerpt, etc. And because we are working with widgets that dynamically generating the text, we can't change the content of the widget, but we can change the style. This is a post title widget that displays the post title dynamically. We can change the preview to a different post by clicking on this icon and here search for the post that we would like to preview. I'm going to search for squat. It will find our blog post that contain the word squat. I will choose it and click apply and preview. Now we can see that all the widgets stay the same, but the text inside the widget change. Okay, so we have a different feature image, different post content. You can see our quote over here and different title. Other widgets in this template, like the about me widget can definitely be replaced, right? We can write anything we want over there. We can delete it, etc. It's not a post specific widget. Okay, so let's start cleaning and organize this blog post. First of all, we can delete this blog excerpt because we don't have excerpt to our blog posts. And right now we're just showing a random excerpt. Here at the top, we can see our page title. This is the category and some share buttons. If you like this design, keep it. I don't really like it, so I'm going to move the category above the featured image. Of course, we can't see it because it's white on white, so I'm going to change the color to purple and also make the font bold. Great, so now I will drag the title under the category name and also the social icons under the title. I will change the title color to purple or maybe even black. I think it will look better, just like so. And we can also see that there is a large margin over here, bottom margin, so I'm going to change it from 40 to zero and they become closer to each other. Now let's target the social buttons and I will change the columns to four, so it will take the full width. And also I will change the colors to original colors instead of custom. Just like so, it's looking really good. Um, I really like it. We can also add maybe the post info widget from here and drag it either above or under the social media. And this widget will show relevant information regarding this specific blog post. All right, so what do we do with this section, the section at the top? We can, of course, click on the X and delete it. However, maybe we can do something else with it. Let's click on the settings icon and we will change the height to mean height. And maybe we will reduce it from 400 to 230, 250, something like that. Let's do 230. Here we'll go to the style tab and under the background, we will choose an image. But instead of choosing a fixed image, we will generate a dynamic image based on the blog feature image. And as you can see, it will show the featured image of the post. Now, if you would like the featured image to be at the top, you can delete the bottom one, or you can apply a background overlay to the top image, just like so. You can also change the overlay color and the overlay opacity. Let's reduce it to 0.8. And now we will take this column, the one with the content, and we will lift it. We will put it on top of the background image. To lift it, we just need to change the margin top from minus 120 to maybe minus 400 or 350. Okay, minus 320 is the magic number for this one. I really like it and that's beautiful. I really like the top of this blog post. Now we can scroll to the bottom and start working with the bottom section of the post. So let's scroll down and see what elements we are dealing with. We will pass the post content and here we can see all the other elements that we can edit or delete or change. All right, I would like to add share buttons to the bottom section of the post, okay? But because we already have share buttons at the top, 
I can just copy them. So instead of scrolling all the way up, I will use our navigator tool, find the share button, duplicate them, and then drag them inside the navigator to the right location, just underneath the Facebook button. As you can see it over here, just like so. I just saved a lot of valuable time. Instead of creating a new widget, I just duplicate them. Now I will delete this Facebook like button. You can leave it, but I don't like it there, so I'm going to delete it. We will delete their author box as well, but first of all, let's create our own before deleting theirs. Um, let's drag maybe an inner section, just like so, underneath the author box. And here we will reduce the left column to about 33% or so, and we will drag an image to the left column. We will set the image to be our coach, Jessica. And to the right column, we will drag a title and a text editor, where we can write a short description about us or about the coach. Now let's just align both columns to the center. Vertical align, we'll change it to middle. And now when it's both centers, we can pretty much change the text or the content to something else, let's say about me and some show description. Now we can delete the other box, just like so, excellent. It's looking really good. We can also give this box a border and a background. So under the style tab, we will change the border type to solid. The default is five pixel and we will need to change the width to about one pixel if we want to make it thinner. So I'm going to change it to one just like so and also set a background color to maybe light gray, something that will differentiate this box from the rest of the content. Excellent. It looks really good. I really like it. Now let's target this live reply title and we'll go to the advanced tab and give a margin top just to push it away from the auto box. I'm also going to delete this Facebook comments because I would like to enable WordPress comments. So I will drag this widget just underneath the live reply instead of the Facebook comments, just like so. And as you can see, users or visitors will be able to leave a reply without Facebook, which is great. Now the last section is nice, it's sign up form. Okay, but remember that our footer also contain a sign up form. So it's going to double itself. And when we close this element of sidebar, we can see that it's actually same color with footer. We can change the color, of course, but we don't need double forms okay so we can pretty much delete this section we don't really need it if we have a newsletter sign up form in our footer so let's just get rid of it and delete it very cool we almost done the page starts to look really good let's just minimize elemental sidebar again and look at that that's beautiful let's scroll again all the way up do a nice last round before publishing it looks really good Oh, and I can see here that our WordPress comments already contain a live reply title, so we can actually delete the one above it, just like so, so it won't repeat itself. Excellent. Now all we have left to do is just deal with the sidebar. Of course, you can edit each of the elements. You can delete them, add more elements based on your needs. It's less important than the content itself. It was very important for me to show you that the content generate itself. And the sidebar is pretty much staying fixed. You can delete any element from there, just like this video that I'm deleting right now. I really like the results. I think the template is ready to be published. So let's click on the publish button. And here we will include it in every blog post. Click save and close. Excellent, we did an amazing job. Looks really good. And let's just refresh our blog post to make sure the changes took effect. And look at that, how nice it is. Just a beautiful blog post and we can see our content we'll scroll down to make sure the bottom part looks good as well and it is i really love it and of course now we can go to any other blog post and just make sure it looks good with them too let's check this train for your first marathon blog post and look at that the featured image change accordingly and everything change accordingly looks really really good another small adjustment that we can do maybe to paint the paragraph color in black so it will pop out better it's gonna be easier to read and maybe make the font larger 
Okay, so we change the color to black and now we will increase the font size. We can also change the line height to minimize the height between the lines. Just like so. Excellent. Now let's just click on update. Go back to your blog post to make sure it took effect. And it did. It looks really good. Obviously, you can make it better. I didn't put too much time into styling the text. You already know how to do it and just do it in a way that it will fit your brand and will fit your business. Okay guys, so what are archive pages? Well, we already know that our blog page is an archive page. We actually created this page over here and we told WordPress that we would like this page to be our blog archive page. Post archive pages will display our blog post in a chronicle order when the newest one is at the top. Now, how does WordPress know that we want this page to be our blog archive page? By just creating this page and call it blog, it doesn't mean that WordPress knows automatically to make it an archive page. But at the beginning of this course, if you remember, we went into the settings tab and here in this post page, we set it up to be blog. And that's when we told WordPress, hey, treat this page as an archive page. And since then, this page became an archive page. So we created this archive page. The content will be generated automatically. We can't control the content, but we can control the style. Now we also have many archive pages that were created automatically by WordPress that we never created. Let me give you a live example from our website. Let's enter one of our blog posts. And when we're clicking on the blog post category strand, for example, it will take us to another archive page that we never created. You can see the URL over here. We never created this page. However, every time you create a blog post category, WordPress automatically creating an archive page for that category. And this archive page will display all the posts under this category. So we have a strength category, we have an archive page for the strength category. We have a fitness category, we have an archive page for the fitness category. So again, you can't control the content that goes into this page. However, we can control the design and the style of the page. In the next lecture, we will create an archive page template. Okay, so let's create a template for our archive pages. We already know how to do it. Let's go to templates, add new, and here we will choose archives. We will give it a name. I'm just going to call it archive template and click on create template. Excellent. Now you already know that I really like to work with the pre-designed templates so we can choose something really nice from here. They already did most of the work for us so we can definitely use it. So we can see many nice designs. We can see this design with the posts next to each other. We also have this kind of designs when the posts are under another, which is also really nice. So I like this design. This design I usually choose for my websites. So I will click on insert. So that's excellent. We can see immediately that the template was loaded with our content, with our blog posts. We can see all the blog posts one under another looking really good. However, it feels kind of empty with no sidebar. So I'm going to delete this template and I'm going to reopen the templates folder to choose a different template with a sidebar. So we have few options over here. We can look at this one. We also have this option. And we also have this option over here that also may look better than the original one. So let's just go with this one and see what it looks like. I'm going to click insert and wait for it to load. Okay, we can see that the template was filled with our blog post. We can also go to the widgets list and see three more widgets related to archive pages. This archive posts widget will display our blog posts. We can drag it into here. However, we don't need it because the template we loaded already contains this widget inside of it. So we can just click on this widget from here and then edit it. As you can see, Elementor already edited it for us in the template. However, we have the option to change it or adjust it to our needs. We have three options under the content. We have layout, pagination, and advanced, and we will start with the layout option. 
the first thing here is the skin and that's right now set to cards as you can see there is a nice border around the post you can also change it to classic and the design will be way flatter and you can also change it to full content to show the full blog post each and every one of them one under another you guessed it right it's not recommended so therefore you will stick with cards or classic i really like the cards design it's really nice and gentle all right the columns here it's one you can change the number to any other number and it will be one next to each other i like to display them vertically so therefore i'm going to bring it back to one show image you have the option to hide the image and here in the image ratio you have the option to make the image larger and zoom into the image the 0.5 it's the standard default and it's really nice if you will toggle this button off it will hide the title and this toggle is in charge for the excerpt you also have the option to change the excerpt length right now it's set to 25 words you can change it to 50 and the excerpt length will double as you can see here 25 is a good standard number so i'm going to bring it back to 25 just like so and the metadata is this row over here as you can see the information about this post right now it contains two details date and comments you can delete them and you will see the date disappeared or you can add more such as the author date time comments etc and now we have all of them again i will stick to the default date and comments the meta parameters are separated with this you can change it to dashes and it will change the read more button is in charge for this one here and you can change the text to continue reading or something else that you would like and you can toggle this button to on if you would like to open the post in a new window all right so the next one is the badge what is it it's the category badge over here right now it's set to category you can turn it off and then it will disappear or you can turn it back on and change the category to tags and it will show you the first tag you set for the post I'm just going to bring it back to categories to show the category of the post and the last option is the avatar you can turn this option to on and then it will show you the author image of this post as you can see here now because our website has only one author which is me it's going to be kind of repetitive itself to see the same image on every blog post so in my case i'm just going to turn it off you can definitely use it if you have multiple authors okay now we can move to the pagination tab so let's close the layout and expand the pagination and the pagination are the numbers at the bottom of the screen that indicates on which page we are on and how many more pages there are so let's say if we we'll go to plugins for WP blog, we can see that they have three pages and right now we are on page number one and we have two more to go. So that's pretty much the pagination number. Because we don't have more than 10 posts, we can't see the pagination just yet. However, when you will have them, you will be able to see the numbers. I promise you that by then you will know WordPress so much better and you will know exactly what to do in this pagination tab. Anyhow, there aren't too many options there. You can change the pagination from numbers to none or just arrows. The page limit is set to five. So that means that if you are visiting, for example, page number seven, it will show you two pages before seven and two pages after seven and together it will be five numbers. So it's going to show you five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can turn the shortened option to on and it will contain two arrows, one for the first page and another one for the last page. And the alignment option is pretty straightforward. You can position the numbers left, middle, or right. And now let's move into the advanced tab. There is not much to do over here. This is a very rare case if somebody landed on an archive page without any posts. That's the message he will get. You can change the message here if you want, but I'm just going to keep it as is. Nice, so after we finish set up our cards, maybe it's a good time to style it better. Okay, maybe we can change the background color and the text, etc. So we can move to the style tab and here we can see that we have the option to change any part of the card. Feel free to expand any tab and see what the options that every part can give you. 
and feel free to play with it and design it as you wish. In our example, let's just focus on a few things. Let's say that we would like to change the background color of the badge to a different color, something that will fit our brand better. So we will expand the image tab. And here we have the option to change the badge background color. So let's change it to pink maybe. Just like so, it looks way better. And now we can move on and maybe change the title or style the title. So in order to access the title, we will need to expand the content tab. And here we have the title section. We can change the color and we can also click on the typography icon and increase the text size, maybe to 35, and even change the font family to maybe a cursive font. I think it will look better. Not this one. Maybe that one. Great, so because it's more gentle, we can even increase the font size maybe to 40, something like that. Excellent, now let's play with the read more button. And we will scroll down still under the content tab. I think it's supposed to be over here. Yeah, here it is. We can change the color to purple or pink or any other color that will fit our brand. And we can also increase the text size of this read more button. Now the last change I will do, I think, before publishing it, maybe I can change the background color of the card to light gray. So how do we do that? Let's close the content tab and expand the card tab. And here I will change the background color from white, from the default color to maybe very light gray. Just like so. And it looks really good. I really like the way it looks. So we can pretty much move forward and maybe publish it and make it live on our website. Okay, so we already know what to do. Just click publish. And here we will add a condition to display it on every archive page. Click save and close. Great, now let's go back to our blog. We will refresh this page and make sure it looks good. And we can see that it looks amazing. Beautiful page. We can see all of our blog posts exactly as we style them. Excellent job. And it will affect every archive page. So let's go to one of the blog posts. And here we will go to the strength category. And we can see that the strength archive page category also designed accordingly. And it looks really, really nice. And of course, here in the sidebar, we didn't talk about it much, but you already know that you can change every part of the sidebar. You can add elements, remove elements, etc. We already did it a few times in this course. So if you want to add elements, go for it, pause this video and do it. And the last thing that I would like to show you, it's just probably changing this background color to purple. We already know how to do it. Let's go back to the elemental screen, target this section, and we'll change the background color to purple. Looks way better. Click update and revisit your archive pages. Click refresh and we can see our new purple background color. Hey guys, so in this lecture we will learn how to create beautiful featured images for your blog posts like these two over here. We'll try to mimic the image below and you don't need to know any previous skills for that. You don't need to know Photoshop or anything like that. Just go back to my booklet and click on this link over here. It will take you to this website. Here you will have many dimensions and sizes to choose from. If you're creating one for your Facebook page or YouTube channel, etc. And here at the second section will have the perfect ratio for a blog post featured image. So let's choose this one. And here you will have many, many options and pre-designed options to choose from. For example, this template, I used to create this top featured image over here. And this template, I used to create this featured image here. So let's try to use this image one more time. Excellent, we will load it. And we see that we have few elements here. We have a background image, text, and a block. All right, let's start with the background image. So click here and then search for the background image that you would like to replace it with. So we will look for squat and here you have many, many 
squats options and fitness related images so definitely look for the one you like the most of course you will search for your niche or for your business and then click on your desired background image just like so we can see the background image replaced with our image excellent we have the option to flip it horizontally or vertically with these two buttons here this one will flip it horizontally and this one will flip it vertically all right now let's click on the reposition and here we have the option to zoom into the image and then just reposition it by dragging it to where you want it to be when you are satisfied click apply and as you can see it looks really good very nice there are a few more options related to the background so let's move to the effect tab and here we can see that it's pretty dusty we can see that there is a layer on top of it we can reduce the layer to zero or we can bring it back to what it was and change the background overlay to a different color something that will match our brand for example purple or pink and then change the transparency to a higher or lower okay you can also play with the dark and with the blur there are many other css filters over there that you can play with in order to change the way the image looks but if you want it to be just pure image just make sure everything over there is set to zero all right let's click on this block and here we can change the block color of course to any other color that we would like in our case i'm just gonna change it to blue or pink again just like so and don't forget to change this pointy block over here to the same color so it will match the block on the left just like so all right let's move on to our text we can see here that we have three lines three rows how to back squat so first of all we will change this text to how to back squat just like so i can make the text larger change the color maybe we can make it 60 pixels just like so i can just lift it above because i have to add another line and i will go to text add a heading actually maybe a subheading will be better it will be more gentle so add a subheading excellent over here and i will type in the right way so it will be how to back squat the right way and i will change the color of this text to pink or yellow something that will fit the background color and of course i will make it maybe a cursive so it will break the default text just like so excellent start to look really good i can also set a shadow to make it pop up better excellent and maybe make it just larger like 50 pixels beautiful job in less than five minutes we created a beautiful professional featured image for your blog post this is amazing then just go to download and then click on web optimized image and it will download your image to your computer and then just upload it to your blog post okay so now we are about to start a new section and this section is extremely important section for your website and your business as i told you earlier guys i'm not just a web designer i'm also a web developer marketer and a blogger for over 10 years i gained a lot of experience and knowledge that i would like to share with you and this section actually differentiates between this course which is the ultimate wordpress course to other courses out there because nobody else will teach you what i'm going to teach you right now and that is amazing i definitely recommend you to go with it and apply it on your website so in this section we will learn how to connect our website to google analytics so we can start working with data we will also learn how to connect our website to google search console so we can see which articles are working and which not and what we need to improve we are also going to learn how to get any premium wordpress plugin for over 97 percent of the original price and we're also going to work with Yoast plugin to improve our SEO so we will rank high on Google and also how to improve our site speed which also going to help us improve our Google score and will help us to acquire more visitors that will transform into customers so this is very important section let's get going in this lecture we will connect our website to Google Analytics now obviously to master google analytics will take you some time and you will need to 
learn and take more courses and lectures. Because this is a WordPress course and not Google Analytics course, I won't show you how to use Google Analytics. However, I would like to show you how to connect between your website to Google Analytics. So when you decide by yourself to move on with your data-driven journey and learn Google Analytics, you'll have enough data to work with. So let's go to google.com forward slash analytics. Click on start for free. And then start measuring. Here you will need to create an account name. I'm going to call it Good Body Gym, just like our website name. Just like so. Scroll down and just keep all these boxes checked. They are recommended by Google. And when you keep them checked, you will gain more data and more information regarding your website visitors and customers. Click Next. And here we will only going to measure and track our website because we don't have an app. And click Next. And here we'll need to fill some information regarding our website and the property that we are measuring. So the website name is Good Body Gym. The website URL we will change to HTTPS because we have an SSL certificate and we will paste our website URL over here. We will set an industry category to fitness, beauty and fitness, just like so. And you can change the date and time to a different time, to a different time zone. We are in the East Coast, so I'm going to change it to New York. Click Create. And here we will need to read and agree to the terms of use by checking these two boxes over here and click I accept. Now on this screen, we will get our Google Analytics tracking code that we will need to paste on every page that we would like to track. Because we load our header on every page, we can just paste this code once inside the header and then it will track all the pages. So let's do it together. First, we will copy this Google tracking code. We will go back to our website and into the dashboard. Great. Now we will go to Appearance and then Team Editor. Now this is another great reason why we need to use a child team because if we will paste it in the header.php file of the parent team, we will lose this code in our next update. So therefore use a child team. Because our child team is active, all these files here belong to the child team. Let's click on header.php look for the opening head tag here and we will paste our Google tracking code just underneath this head opening tag. Click on update file and wait for the green feedback. There you go. Now let's go back to Google Analytics and in order to make sure the code is working, let's navigate to the real time tab and into the overview tab. Now we see that we have zero visitors. Let's go to our website to visit our website again. The tag and the code will execute and when we will visit this page again, in a second, as you can see, we can see that somebody is visiting our website. In our case, it's me and visiting the home page. There you go. That tag is working perfectly fine. And now Google Analytics will start to collect valuable data. All right. So if you want to know what to do with this data, you should learn some Google Analytics. It's a very fascinating subject and topic, and I highly recommend you guys to do it because it will help you with your WordPress website and with your business. If you would like to take your analytics skills to the next level, definitely follow the resources in the booklet. You will gain a lot of information, and I'm always going to keep it up to date with the best resources. SEO or search engine optimization is one of the most important aspects of every website. When you have good SEO, you will be ranked higher, and of course you will get more visitors and customers to your website. There are many SEO plugins for WordPress, but there is one that is above the rest, and that plugin called Yoast. In this lecture, we will install Yoast and also set it up using the configuration wizard. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard, into plugins, add new, and here we will search for Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T. Excellent. We can see the first result on the left. It's a very, very popular plugin, over 5 million active installations with 5-star reviews. So click on install and activate. And after you activated the plugin, 
we will see a new tab added to our WordPress sidebar on the left. We can see it over here called SEO. So let's click on it. And here in the Yoast screen, we can go to each of the tabs individually and also then move to the search appearance over here. However, they created a configuration wizard for us to make our job easier and it will be way more efficient because we're going to follow the questions they are asking us and directing us. So let's open up the configuration wizard and we'll go to the questions. It's very simple and very quick, only eight questions. For the first question, we will choose option A. Our site is live and ready to be indexed and click next. In the next question, they will ask what best describe our business. Here you have few options to choose from. Now, yes, we do run a blog on our website. However, our business is a gym. It's an offline business. Okay, it's a brick and mortar. So therefore, this option will fit our business better. A small offline business. So I'm going to stick with this one and click next. On the next screen, I will need to fill some information regarding the business. Our gym is an organization. Another person. If I built the website to a specific coach, I may change it to person, but in this case, we'll keep it an organization. Here, the name of the business, I'm just going to type Good Body Gym. And for the organization logo, I will choose the logo we uploaded at the beginning of this course. This one. Here, add all your social channels. I don't have social channels for this business because it's a demo site, so I won't add anything, but you should. And on this screen, they're asking us what Google should display in the search result. So obviously we want them to display posts and pages, but we don't need them to display our Elementor templates. It doesn't provide any valuable information to our readers. Therefore, we should check it as no. On this screen, they're asking us if our website have multiple authors. Why does it matter? It matters because of duplicate content. And let me show you what I mean by that. So let's go back to our WordPress website and into the blog archive page. This blog archive page contain links to our blog posts, right? We have all the blog posts we created on this page. That's excellent, that's great. We can get into any of the pages and then we can click on the admin link and that will lead us to a different archive page that's the admin archive page and because the admin is the only author of our blog this archive page it's identical to the blog archive page we don't need them both because google may think that it's duplicated content so in order to prevent that we will keep the option as no as long as we are the only author. And then Google won't index the admin auto page, but only the blog archive page, which is great. On the next screen, we can change our website name and we can also change the title separator. I will just leave it like that. It's not a big deal and click next. All right, so we pretty much done setting it up. It was very simple and very quick. Scroll all the way down. Pass the next two screens, click yes, and then click close. Excellent. So it's perfectly fine the way it is now. If in the future you would like to change some of the details and the information you entered, you can do so by run the wizard configuration again. Or if you know where to find the specific configuration that you would like to change, you can go through the tabs and change it over there. Now, if you see this message, click on start processing and speed up your site now. Yoast will reorganize and reorder the data in the database. So definitely click on the button. It's only going to take about 30 seconds or less. And then you'll see this feedback telling you that you've just speed up your website. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to use Yoast with individual pages and posts. In this lecture, I will show you how to use the Yoast plugin and how can it help us to improve our SEO on every page. So let's enter this back squat blog post, for example. We will click on edit post. And because we activated the Yoast plugin, we can see on the right sidebar a new SEO option over here. 
we can also minimize the other tabs. Now we can also see at the bottom of the post, under the post, a new Yoast SEO section. Here we have some tabs under the SEO tab. And we can see that we also have two more tabs at the top called Readability and Social. Let's start with the first SEO tab on the left. Excellent. They're asking us what our focus keyword. Now, this article is about back squat. So that can be a nice SEO keyword, right? They pretty much asking us what we would like to be ranked for. So let's say somebody is searching for back squat. That's the results he will find, right? We want to be on the first page of Google. So we want to be found whenever somebody is searching for back squat. That's going to be our keyword or key phrase. So we're going to enter it over here. And after doing so, Yoast will give us a feedback. You can see here the emoji face, if it's good or bad or what we need to improve. But before we'll get into the feedback, let's open Google Preview tab first to see how Google will display our blog post. So this is the mobile view. We can also switch to the desktop view. And here we see three elements. We see the title, the URL, and meta description. Click on Edit Snippet if you'd like to edit any of them. As you can see, the parameters inside the SEO title will display the blog post title. You can see the title, the separator, and the site name. I recommend you to leave everything as is. However, if you want to display a different title in Google than your original blog post, feel free to delete everything here and just write whatever you want. After I changed it, the new title, How to do perfect back squats, will be displayed in Google instead the original title of this blog post. The slug is the URL of this blog post. I wouldn't touch it, I would just leave it the same. And the meta description is the short description appears underneath the page title. Now, Google usually take a random paragraph from your blog post. However, if you want to create a custom meta description, just feel free to enter it in this box and Google will pick this one up. Also, try hard as possible to stay in the green zone because you don't want your custom text to be cutted from the viewpoint. Great, so now we can see our new preview, how it's going to look in Google. Now we can close the snippet editor and actually the Google preview tab and open the SEO analysis. And here Yoast will tell us all the things we need to improve in order to be ranked for this keyword or to at least have a better chance to rank for this keyword. So let's go through some of the things we need to improve in this blog post. Let's start with the first two items. So they're asking us to create outbound links and internal links. So let's start with the outbound links, which are links to a different website. So let's say, for example, that this paragraph is talking about the most back squats made by someone in one hour. So we will highlight the word that we would like to link and we will create a link to the Wikipedia article that talking about this world record. I don't know if that article actually exists, so I will just link to Google, but that's the idea. Now let's create an inbound link, which is a link to a different article on our website. So we will highlight a word, we will look for our article, for example, how to first the first marathon, we will link a word, and now both of these red flags should be green because we change it. And now our feedback change. We still have a few more things to change. I will show you maybe a couple more, but that's pretty much the idea. They tell you what you need to change in order to have a better chance and you need to change it. So let's stick with this key phrase density. Right now, our key phrase appears in the article only once. And they're telling us that for this length of an article, it's better to have it at least five times. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to sprinkle this key phrase in every paragraph just to increase the key phrase density. Obviously, this article doesn't make much sense because it's a bunch of random words. But when you will create your blog post, you definitely need to make sure your blog is readable and it makes sense. But that's what key density is. And now when we scroll down, we can see that it became green. So yes, just go through the different feedbacks that they are giving you. Make sure everything is green, or at least the majority of the flags are green. 
This feedback over here telling us that back squat doesn't appear in the title. It's right because it appears as back squats with S, so don't worry about it. Another one that you'll see pretty often is the image alt attributes, and I will show you how to solve that one. So let's say you have an image in your blog post. Let's just add a random image from our media library. I will choose this one over here. Let's say it's a back squat. And this is the alt text. You pretty much need to describe what this image is about. So write an alt text and click select. And now the orange feedback should be green. And as we can see, it's not orange anymore. It became green, which is excellent. So yeah, just go to the flags and see what you can change, what you can improve. Of course, there is a lot to learn about SEO and it's very interesting. After you'll fix most of the issues, this orange emoji will become green and that's what you should aim for. The readability tab will provide you more information regarding the content and the text itself. Let's, for example, take the second red flag, which is the subheading distribution. They telling us that we don't have enough subheading. Adding subheading is very easy. You just click on the plus icon and choose the heading block. You choose between heading 2, 3, or 4 when heading 2 is more important than heading 4. That's how you break and split a long document to subcategories and subsections, etc. So let's say this section here is talking about back squats for beginners. Great, so after you added some heading, let's scroll back down. We can see that the feedback changed, but it's still red because it recommends us to create subheadings every 300 words. So we will need to add more subheadings. All right, guys, so just again, go through the flags, fix everything you need. And when you're done, click on update and move on to your next blog post. Okay guys, so in this lecture, we will connect our website to Google Search Console. Google Search Console will help you measure your site's search traffic and performance and also fix issues. So there are many things to learn about Google Search Console. However, the main focus of this lecture is actually to submit our sitemap to Google Search Console and by doing so, we will tell Google whenever we're creating or updating a post or a page so he will come back to crawl our website so click on the google search console link in the booklet and you'll be redirected to google search console page here we will need to choose what kind of property we have domain or url prefix and because we would like to crawl all the links in our domain we're just going to copy our website name and paste it here under the domain option goodbodygym.com just as it is without the HTTP or HTTPS. Excellent. Now Google wants us to verify that we are the owner of the domain, right? Otherwise, we can just enter any domain that we want and see the results. However, we need to prove Google that we own this domain by creating a text record in our hosting account. So let's navigate to sideborn.com forward slash hostgator. It will take us to our hostgator website. And here we will need to log in or sign in. So click on sign in and then into the portal. There you go. Enter your credentials and log into your account. Now let's launch our C panel, control panel. And here we will need to access the DNS records. So scroll down and you can see here advanced zone editor on the right. If you can't find it, just go all the way up and use the search function and search for DNS, and then you will see it over here. Now we will need to create a TXT record or text record, and that's very easy. All we need to do is just change the A type to TXT, just like so. The name just going to be our website name.com. Excellent, the TTL need to be a positive number, so one will be enough, and the text data will be this, record over here that Google provided us. So we'll paste it here and click on add record. We'll get this green feedback indicating that the record was added successfully and we can actually scroll all the way down to see our new text record over here. Excellent, we'll go back to Google and we'll click on verify. It may take about an hour to verify, 
but if you lucky it's just going to be immediately otherwise just keep clicking on refresh click on go to property and here you will see your google search console dashboard right again there are many things to learn about google search console of course it's out the scope of this course i will leave you with some resources inside my booklet where you can study the subject if you want however the most important thing is to submit our sitemap that will notify google whenever we create or update a new page or a post so let's go to sitemaps from the left and here we will need to enter our sitemap url well we never created one but luckily when we installed the yoast seo plugin they created it for us okay so we just need to copy the link of the sitemap so let's go to seo and then into general navigate to the features tab and here we'll scroll down to the xml sitemaps option we'll click on this icon and this is the link to our sitemap click on it and this is our sitemap sitemap contain links to all of our pages and blog posts now sitemaps get updated automatically so whenever we will create a new page or a new post it will show in this sitemap without us entering it ourselves so every time we have a new page or a post google will know that we have a new page or a post and it will come back to our website to crawl it again so let's copy this sitemap url we'll go back to google search console we will enter it over here click submit and we'll get this feedback saying the sitemap was submitted successfully click on got it now you may still see couldn't fetch error sign on the right side over here however when you refresh the page maybe after a couple times you will see the success green message okay guys so this lecture is an amazing lecture because it will save you a lot a lot of money we already know that we can install plugins from our wordpress dashboard by going to plugins add new and then search for the plugin that you would like to install if for example you would like to create an online store you can search for woocommerce and then install the free woocommerce plugin however the free version of woocommerce is very basic if you would like to make your store better and expand the functionality of woocommerce you will need to buy extensions for woocommerce for example let's navigate to the woocommerce website into the marketplace and view all their extensions if we'll take the woocommerce subscriptions extension for example we can see that this extension specifically just this one will cost you 200 dollars a year and that's a lot of money for a new website who doesn't know if they're going to make that money this is ridiculously expensive and there is a better way to get all these extensions and plugins for way way cheaper well not too many people know that wordpress plugins and themes are released under gpl gpl means general public license it is absolutely legal and legit for you to buy a plugin or a theme and then redistribute the plugin or the theme for free or for way cheaper price so why do we need to pay 200 dollars just to get updates and support now in this lecture i will show you how to get the latest updates and the latest versions and if you don't need support you will save a lot of money let me give you an example let's start a new tab and go to plugins for wp.com this website have an active subscription to all the original developers they download the latest versions from the original developers and they redistribute the plugins for a very cheap price now we already have an account with them because we downloaded our child team through them so click on login if you don't have an account yet just click on sign up it's completely free and if you forgot your password just click on this lost password link and they will resend you your password then click on login and then from your inside my account page click on this download our plugin manager banner and it will start downloading their plugin now let's install their plugin on our website here under plugins add new just let's go to upload plugin and we will drag their plugin to here and we'll click install now
click on Activate Plugin, and after you activated it, you will see the new plugins for WP tab added to your WordPress sidebar. Click on it. And here inside the settings tab, you will need to enter your username and key. So let's go back to the plugins for WP website. And here we'll copy the username and the key. So let's start with the username. We'll copy it and paste it. And then we'll copy the key. And paste the key over here. Click Save Settings. And then you will be transferred to the Products tab. Here it will load all the products they have. And they have over 1700 premium plugins and 800 premium teams. That's amazing. So let's take this WooCommerce subscription plugin for example. We can see that in the official website, the price is 199 and the latest version is 3.0.5. Let's copy the name and we will search it here in the plugins for WP search. And we can see that they have the same plugin, same version, the latest version, click purchase, and here, the same plugin exactly will cost you less than $5, only $4.99. And the only difference between them is that plugins for WP can provide you with a license key because they can provide you support for the plugin. That's the only difference. If you don't need support, and most likely you don't need support, just save a lot of money and go with plugins for WP. After purchasing the plugin, this purchase button will change to install button. And the nice thing about it that you will have free updates for the first year. That means that you will always going to have the latest original version. If you will need to purchase multiple plugins or themes, consider getting their unlimited downloads plan. It's only going to cost you like $12.97 a month or $87 a year. And that will save you way more money. So in this lecture, we will talk about site speed and why it's so important. I can't express it enough how important your website speed is. If you have a slow website, all your hard work worth nothing and will go down the drain. Let me give you an example. If you're writing a blog post about back squat and your competitor writing similar blog post about back squat, but his website is faster, he will outrank you in the Google search result. As a result, he will get more traffic, more visitors and of course more customers so site speed is very very important and crucial ranking factor as you can see here in most.com google already indicated that site speed is one of the most important ranking factors in his algorithm it's super important for google and if you didn't get it by now i want to give you a few extra facts regarding website speed so here in the booklet, I added five facts regarding website speed. Of course, there are many, many more, but those five are very important for us and for our business. We can see that 80% of the web page load time is because that you need to download all of our files. WordPress comes with many PHP files, JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, and that takes a lot of time to download. We can also see that 47% of consumers expect a website to load in two seconds or less, and 40% of your website visitors will abandon your website if it will take more than three seconds to load. Those are heavy numbers that can affect your revenue big time. So here at the top, we have three websites that can help us check our website speed time. I already showed you how to use the Google one, and now I would like to show you how to use the popular Pingdom test. Here in Pingdom, we will need to copy our website URL and paste it over here, just like so. And let's change the tester to North America. Click Start Test. And it will run the test. It will take about 40 seconds. And then it will give you a great details regarding what you need to change to make it faster. Excellent. Well, as you can see from the get-go, our website is not that bad. Okay, we have many things to improve, obviously, but it's pretty decent starting point. Our overall score is 75. And here at the bottom, we have few things that we need to change. As you can see, the top result, make fewer HTTP requests. It's one of our most important things to change. And here it will show us what kind of requests our website is asking for. 
So we have scripts, images, CSS, etc. And we have 27 script files and 25 images. And everything here is a lot. It will take a lot of time. For example, the images over here, as you can see, will take 48% of the loading time. So if your website loading time is 3 seconds, the images will take a second and a half to load. We can definitely minimize it and concatenate all our files into one file so it will take way less time to download it and serve it to our visitors now it's gonna be hard to do it by ourselves but luckily there is one plugin that can help us to do just that and will speed up your website big big time and that plugin called wp rocket because it will skyrocket your wordpress web page speed time now, when visiting the official website, we can see in the pricing page that it's not a cheap plugin to have. The minimum version is going to cost you $49 if you want to install it only on one website. However, I already showed you that we can get all the plugins we need for a very, very good price, only $4.99. I think that's a great time to use the plugins for WP Plugin Manager and get the same WP Rocket plugin for only $4.99, which is definitely what the investment to speed up your website so let's log into our website again into the plugins for wp plugin over here and i will look for rocket i can see this wp rocket result over here i'm just going to click on purchase it will take me to the plugins for wp page and here i can just purchase this plugin for a good price and then i will install it on my website in the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to use this WP Rocket plugin to speed up your website. Okay, so I just purchased the WP Rocket plugin and the purchase button changed to install. Now I'm going to click on install. It will take a second and then I will get this feedback saying the plugin was installed successfully. I can navigate to our plugins page and I can see that the WP Rocket over here, I just need to activate it. Just like so, I'm going to click activate. And after I did, I can access the new WP Rocket plugin from inside our settings tab by going to settings and WP Rocket, just like so. Excellent. So now we are inside the WP Rocket plugin and we can see that we have some comments at the top of this plugin to deal with first before we are going to set it up. So first of all, we have this comment over here, but let's start with this one. I will click on no thanks. I don't want to share information with WP Rocket. Now here, this message telling us that we need to turn off our WordPress default cache. If you ask yourself, what is a browser cache? That's a great question. And let me explain. When someone is visiting your website for the first time using, let's say browser like Chrome, the web browser will contact the server in order to get all the web pages, the images, the files, and the server will send all the files back to the browser. That's a long process that will take a lot of time because that's the first visit. Then your browser is going to save and keep all the files. So in the next visit, second, third, etc., it will serve the files that was saved locally and will save a lot of time. So to use the WP Rocket, cache instead of the default WordPress cache, which is less aggressive, we will go to settings, general, and we will turn off the WordPress default cache by changing this option to off. Click save changes, and we will revisit our WP Rocket plugin and refresh this page in order to use our WP Rocket cache system. Just by activating WP Rocket, you will see great improvement in your site speed. However, we can even make it better by going to some of the tabs over here and change some of the options. So for example, under the cache tab, just make sure to enable cache for mobile devices. It already should be enabled. If you didn't, just make sure to check the first box. Nothing to change here, so let's move to file optimization. And here we need to minify the HTML and also minify the CSS files. So what does minify mean? That's a great question. Our website contain many files. Some of them are really long, like this CSS file that I copy from our website. Okay, you can see that it's over 4,000 lines, which is very, very long. 
minifying the file means deleting all the extra characters and white spaces that we don't need. The result will be one long CSS line that will save valuable resources from the server. We will need to do it for each and every one of our CSS and JavaScript files. Luckily, WP Rocket can do it for us by clicking on this minify CSS. You will get a warning message that doing so may create some errors. Therefore, we will need to check our website at the end of the process. And if something looks different than what we design it to be, we will need to uncheck this box again and just resave the changes. Click on activate and then let's combine all our CSS files into one file. You'll get the same warning message. Click OK. And here we'll optimize the CSS delivery as well. Let's move on to the JavaScript files. We'll do the same for our JavaScript. We'll remove JavaScript migrate and also minify our JavaScript files, combining them together to save resources. And this option will load our JavaScript files in the footer. That means that our content will be displayed first and then our JavaScript will join, which is good. Don't forget, of course, to save the changes. And after you did, we can move on to the next tab, which is the media tab and start working with images. So the first thing is to enable lazy load. And lazy load means that only the images in the viewport that the visitor can see will load. When he will scroll down to a different image, then the server will load the other image and that will save us a valuable time to load them all from the get-go. Because we are using the short pixel plugin, we can leave this enable WebP caching unchecked. If you don't use the short pixel plugin, you can definitely check this box here. All right, after saving the changes, we are pretty much done. All the other tabs are already predefined for you and we don't need to change anything or adjust anything over there. The settings are great as they are and we can just keep it that way. We did the most important things which are minifying and combining the CSS and the JavaScript files. And when going back to the dashboard tab, we can see that WP Rocket already started to concatenate and combining the CSS and the JavaScript files uh, in these both two messages. We can click on refresh to see the progress. And the second we're gonna have green feedback on both of them and both messages will disappear, we can check our website speed site one more time. Again, that's a process that will take only a couple of minutes, so stay patient and it will be ready in no time. So let's refresh this page one more time. We can see that both messages are now green. The first one completely disappeared, so it's all good. And we can retest our website. First of all, let's make sure our website didn't change and it looks exactly as we want it to look. By visiting the homepage, it's definitely look the same. You can also visit the other pages and make sure everything is okay. I'm going to run the test really quick one more time. We can see our score is 75. The loading time is 223 seconds and the requests are 84. Let's run this test one more time. And we can see that after activated the WP Rocket plugin, our site score increased dramatically. Our loading time decreased dramatically, which is good. And also the request dropped from 84 to 58. That's amazing results and Google will be very happy with your website. Great job. Okay, so as you can see, we created a beautiful website with Elementor. However, sometimes we run into a section, let's say in this website, similar web in the About Us page, that we can't create with Elementor because Elementor doesn't have the widget to create that. Take this section, for example, this section called a Timeline, and that's showing the progress of a company or a project during the years in a certain amount of time. Okay, this is a very cool section and sometimes we run into sections that we would like to create but we can't with Elementor because we don't have the widget to do so. Now, there is a widget for that. You just need to find the right library. There are many companies that took it upon themselves to expand the functionality and the widgets of Elementor. This is a short list. You can click on view all to see many more Elementor libraries, but let's take the ultimate add-ons for Elementor, for example. So by clicking on it, it will take you to this ultimate add-ons website. That's a plugin that will add many more widgets to Elementor. Now you can scroll down and see what they are offering you, all the widgets that this plugin include and contain. And 
if we are looking for a timeline in widget, for example, we can come here to the bottom and we can find the timeline over here. So this library offer a timeline widget, which is great. So we can buy this plugin. We can go to the pricing page and we can see that the minimum price is 52 or up. Now we already know that we can get the same plugins for way better price if we don't need a support and most likely we won't need it. And we'll go to the plugins for WP tab. I already purchased the annual plan because I have many plugins that I would like to download. I can download all elemental libraries from this plugin. I'm just going to look for ultimate add-ons. And I can see ultimate add-ons for Elementor over here. The original plugin with updates for one year. I'm going to click install and then I will get this feedback saying the plugin was installed successfully. I will move to the plugins list and I can see our new plugin over here. All I need to do is just to activate it. Just like so. Now the plugin is active and we can start using it. How do we use it? Very, very simple. Navigate to the page that you would like to edit with Elementor. Let's add a timeline widget into the About Us page. And here I will click on Edit with Elementor to access the Elementor screen. And what's nice about all those libraries that they're using the Elementor interface and all the widgets can be found here in the Elementor sidebar. Just scroll down and you will see the new section Ultimate Add-ons because we activated the plugin full with many new widgets. So let's add a timeline over here into a new section. Going back to the widgets list, scroll all the way down to find the right widget, which is over here. Going to drag it. And we can see from the get-go, it was loaded with six events. And you can see the spine, the connector, a painting in a different color, very similar to the section that we would like to achieve and the section we saw. Of course, you can design it and style it exactly like every other Elementor widget. You can go from the content to the style to the advanced. You just need to go to the options over there, but it's very easy. It's working exactly like default Elementor widgets. And anytime you'll add a library such as essential add-ons and happy add-ons, etc., all you need to do, come back to the Elementor screen, scroll down, and you will see the new section of Essential and Happy, etc. So again, if you see a section that you would like to create, but Elementor doesn't have the default widget, you can still get it with the libraries. In this section, we will talk about lead and email capture, what it's good for, and why you need it. So if you remember, when we created our footer, we added a sign-up form to let our visitors sign up to our email list so we can keep being in touch with them. Every business in any kind of industry must have a sign up form if you would like to make money and stay in business. This tonal business, for example, just like us, have a sign up form in its footer, as you can see here. This blogger website have two sign up forms, one at the top that open up as a pop up and the second one at the bottom above the footer to sign up for his newsletter. And the last example, it's from the coffee industry. As you can see, Pete's Coffee has a sign up form at the bottom, just above the footer, like us, to encourage visitors to sign up into their email list. Why this huge company is doing that? Why do they need to capture our leads? You already know me, guys. I would like to back things up with facts. In our booklet, we have two facts that will definitely change your perspective. Fact number one, over 70% of your website visitors who abandoned your website will never come back. Fact number two, 80% of your site visitors that don't buy immediately will buy from you or a competitor in the next 12 months. That's big. Let me break it down for you in simple math. Let's say 100 visitors abandoned your website just this month alone. Okay, 70 of them will never come back and 56 of them are interested in your product or service, but they will buy it from your competitors. That's a lot of money went down the drain. We can change it. How do we change it? We're asking for their email address and we keep our relationship going by sending them weekly emails, promotions, and offers. That's how eventually they will buy it from us and that will go to our competitors. In this lecture, I will show you how to register with GetResponse, which are the best email service company
to send emails to our visitors and customers and they are the best for a few main reasons first when using my link you'll get 30 days for free no need to enter credit card or any other payment details second they have the best reputation and sender score you may be tempted to go with a free company such as mailchimp however that will damage your business because many spammers going with free services like mailchimp their reputation is low. That means that most of your emails will be sent to the promotion or the spam folder. As a result, nobody will open up your emails and your brand recognition will be damaged. The Get Response company are one of the first in the business and therefore they manage to build a great reputation and sender score. That means all your emails going to the inbox of the visitor and the customer. The third reason, it's because it's integrated easily with Elementor. So it's going to be easy to connect between the Elementor form to get response. And the fourth reason is because they have the best prices in the industry. You have the 30 days for free, but then if you would like to keep going with them, it will be very, very affordable for you. So definitely use get response. Let's click on this link or go directly to sideborn.com forward slash GR and it will take you to this website. As I promised, you will get 30 days for free, so click on sign up free. And here you will need to enter some details like your name, email, and password, and click on create account. Excellent. So now you will need to activate your account from the link they sent to your email address, the one that you entered. I enter my business email address, support at sideborn.com. And when I'm going to the email, I can see that I received an email from them with an activation button. I'm going to click on it. Here, I'm required by law to fill some information regarding where I live or where is my physical business address. After you did so, click on this blue button, take me to my account. The first step is to create a list where we would like to keep our contacts. So let's click on the lists option here at the top and talk about lists. Lists are a great way to segment our visitors and customers. For example, you can have a list for weekly newsletter, you can have a list for all the people who contacted you to the contact us form. You can have a list for customers that already purchased a product or a service from you. So you can definitely have multiple lists. They already created a default list for us, as you can see here, but I think it's better to create a new list, something that will be more descriptive, and we can add our contacts to this list. So let's call it weekly emails and click on create. Now we can see it here and we will make this one our default list. Great job. Now let's go to the list settings by clicking on settings. And here we will need to enter some details regarding this list. We already have a list name and we will need to add a list title and list description. I already pre-wrote title and the description and we just need to fill it. So let's start with the title. I will copy it from here and paste it here. The Good Buddy Gym Weekly Newsletter and what this list is about what they will get this is the list description they will get weekly tips and tricks about fitness nutrition and a healthy lifestyle the category can be maybe healthy and beauty or sports and activities we also have the option to change our address from the default to something else and here i will just add our brand logo or icon just like so and our website URL address. So whenever somebody is clicking on the logo, he will be transferred to our website. Great, save the changes. Here in the subscription tab, we don't have too many things to change. Right now you will be notified whenever somebody is subscribed to your email list, you can turn it off here. And in the confirmation message tab, we can edit the confirmation message that your customer or your visitor will receive whenever he's asking to subscribe to your newsletter. Back in the days, they didn't need to confirm their subscriptions. However, the law has changed just recently and now they have to confirm their subscription. So that's the email they will get immediately after asking to subscribe to your email list. The email subject line will be please confirm your subscription to campaign. Campaign name is this list title and if it became too long you can change the subject line to something shorter 
maybe please confirm your subscription without the campaign title just like so you can also add a custom subject line but this is good enough from email will be your name and your email reply to your email address you can change to a different email address if you want and to see the confirmation message just expand it over here and that's the confirmation message your subscribers will get in order to confirm their subscription you can add anything over there i can add the list description over here just to let them know what they are subscribing for and here you can also delete this name over here if you want or just write down your name over there then just click on save confirmation message and now your list is pretty much ready we already set up everything we need plus the confirmation message so it's good and here is what's going to happen so a visitor is coming to your website enjoy your website reading your articles etc scroll all the way down and decide to subscribe to your email list using this form he enter his details click subscribe immediately he will get the welcome message of this list the second he will click on confirm subscription from inside the welcome message he will be added automatically to our list and will get weekly emails from us regarding fitness and lifestyle etc in the next video we will create our first and second automated newsletter okay so we created a list and now it's a good time to create autoresponders as we promised them here whenever they will sign up to our email list we will send them a weekly tip or information regarding fitness etc right so our blog posts are great resources for them we can send them our blog posts every single week right now we have three blog posts and we can create three autoresponders click on create and here you have the option to create a newsletter which is one-time email great for promotions like 4th of july or christmas and we also have the option to create autoresponders to be sent weekly and that's what we are going to choose here we will need to title this first autoresponder this is for our preferences so don't overthink about it just give it some descriptive name so you'll know what this autoresponder is all about the first one is about back squat so i'm going to call it back squat here just make sure it's linked to our list we created and not to the default list that they created for us and we would like to send it immediately after signing up after they will click confirm subscription to their first email they will get this back squat email immediately and that's great they will get it from our name and email address support at good body gym and if they will decide to reply it will come to our email address as well so we can keep being in touch with them which is great now we will need to create and write a subject line okay i already created one i'm just going to copy it from what i wrote over here so this email is about back squat i'm going to copy this title I'm going to paste it here and now i will need to start designing our message i will click on design message now you may be tempted to choose one of their beautiful templates that they created but these templates are great for newsletter or promotions not necessarily for autoresponders let's take marie folio for example one of the greatest marketers and you can see that her autoresponders are very simple and minimal plain text with a link to the blog post only three paragraphs and a link and that's it that's pretty much what you need when you click on the link you will be redirected to her blog post where you can read it all and then comment if you want but every marketer right now doing it that way the autoresponders are usually very simple and minimal and the newsletter are usually with pre-made template so when creating autoresponders i definitely recommend you to go simple let's click on blank templates and we will choose the most simple template over here we can see that we have two sections the header is over here and the body is over here let's start with the header we can cancel the logo if you don't want to show logo just like so however if you do want to show logo you can bring it back and then add image we already uploaded it last lecture you can choose it from there and maybe we can make it smaller by reducing the width and the height uh, will change automatically just like so maybe to 30 excellent 
Now let's go back to the layout and just like Elementor, we can drag some widgets and build our message. We have few options over here. Of course, we'll go with a simple text, just like so. And I'm going to copy this text, few paragraphs and a link to the blog post. I'm going to paste it over here. All I have to do is just to style it a bit spaces between the paragraphs just like so and maybe make the text larger like 18 or so and now i will link this paragraph to our blog post so i will highlight this paragraph and i'm going to click on this blog post and copy the url of this blog post and here i'm going to click on the link icon and paste it over here and click insert. Great, very simple, very minimal. Of course, you can add more blocks like media, quotes, etc. But I like to keep it very minimal because it converts the best. And when you're done, just click next. And in the finalized screen, it will just show you everything that we created. List, subject line, message, etc. And click on save and publish. Great, so now we can see a list of all of our autoresponders. Right now we have one that will fire immediately after they will confirm their subscription. Great, we can create another one from scratch or just duplicate this one because we have most of the things ready like the design and the format and stuff. And all we have left to do is just to change when we would like to send this one. And of course, the name of it, the title and the message. So the second blog post is talking about how to run the first marathon. So I will call this autoresponder first marathon. Again, this is only for us. And because it's a weekly autoresponder, I already made one. So this one will go seven days after the first one, just like so. Of course, I need to change the subject line and the message. So let's copy our subject line from here. How to train for your first marathon. Here I'm going to edit the message. Paste it over here. I will create some spaces between the paragraphs, just like so. Over here as well. I will highlight these few words and we'll link it to our blog post. So I'm going to copy the URL of this blog post, click on the link icon, and enter the blog post URL over here. Click insert. The message is ready, click next, and this message again will be sent seven days after the previous message. Now I can click on save and publish. And now we can see that it's added to our autoresponder list. Excellent, so now we can see that we have after zero days and after seven days. Now we need to create more and more and more every time we create a blog post. That's how we keep our relationship going with them. To know after how many days you should send the next one it will be easier for you guys to sort the emails by the cycle date so all you need to do is just to add seven days to the latest one and that's how you keep it going every seven days so the next one will be set to 14 days after the first one excellent in the next video we will connect get response to elementor and we will test our email list okay so before making sure it's working properly we will need to connect this form, Elementor, with GetResponse, with our GetResponse account in order to make sure it's working. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard, into Elementor, Settings, and here into the Integration tab at the top. Excellent. We'll scroll down till we see GetResponse, and here we will need to generate an API key. An API key is a key, it's a code, that helps websites and applications to connect with each other. So let's go back to our GetResponse account. 
I'm gonna click on the icon here and click on integration and API. Excellent. Here we will click on API and then on generate API key. Here we will need to name this API key for our references. I'm gonna call it Elementor because we'll connect it with Elementor. And this is our secret API key. Click copy, go back to your WordPress dashboard and paste the code over here and click on validate API key. You will get this green check mark showing you that it's all good and they managed to connect with each other. Then just scroll down and click on save changes. Now we can go back to our website and edit our footer to connect the form with the right list. So to access Elementor easily, we can use our admin bar at the top. We can edit this page with Elementor and also all the other sections from here. Well, we need to edit the footer because the form is there, so I will click on the footer option. I will wait for it to load, and here I'm editing only the footer. I will click on this widget, and here inside the actions after submit, I will delete the email because I don't need it, and I will add the get response option instead. And now we only have the get response option. I will expand the get response tab. We already enter our API key. Because of that, we have all the lists we have over here. We have these two lists and I would like to connect them to our weekly emails list. Day of cycle means in what entry point we would like to add them to the list. If you would like them to get the first email and forward, just leave it empty. If you would like them to start getting the fourth email, for example, just enter 28 days, etc. In the field mapping section, you will need to match the fields of the form with the fields of get response. So for example, right now we only have email field, therefore the email is mandatory and you will need to enter the email field. If you have a longer form with other fields like name, last name, etc., just make sure to fill the field mapping. Okay, so the form looks ready. We filled everything we need. I'm going to update it. And now we can revisit our page once again. And I would like to recap and remind you what's going to happen right now before testing it. So a visitor is coming to our website, enjoy the content, scroll down and fill his email address over here. After filling his email address, he will be added to our list immediately. And then he will start getting our messages, our autoresponders, when this one is the first one and seven days after you will get this one. Okay, so I started a new window, an incognito window to test it. And this is my personal email, sidebonecourses at gmail.com. I will navigate to goodbodygym.com, our website, just like as a regular normal visitor, reading the nice content we have over here. And I would like to get weekly tips and tricks. So I will fill my email over here, sidebonecourses at gmail.com. And we'll click on the subscribe button. If everything working correctly, I should get the first tip, which is the back squat. I will go back to my email address. And I can see that I received the email in my inbox, beautiful, working perfectly fine. Clicking on it will take me to this email and the email contain link to the blog post. So clicking on it will take me to the Bexwat blog post. Amazing job, guys. That's how you keep in touch with your customers, with your visitors. And now when we'll go back to the list, we can see that we have one subscriber. We can click on the list to see who the subscriber is and on which autoresponder day he is on right now. Because I just subscribed, it's showing zero. In this video, I will show you how to create newsletters. Now, newsletters, unlike autoresponders, are one-time messages. That's great to run promotions like a Christmas promotion or 4th of July promotions, etc. How to create one? Very easy. Click on create and then create newsletter. Excellent. Now we will need to title this message. That's for our reference, so don't overthink about it. So let's call it 4th of July promotion. In this promotion, we would like to offer them one free class to come and try our gym. The sender email will be our email and they can reply to our email as well. 
Here we will need to enter the email subject line. I already wrote it over here. I'm just going to paste it here, just like so. And here in the recipients, we will need to decide who will get this message. We can send it to both lists or just to our weekly emails list, whatever you guys want. I'm just going to send it to that list because that's the only list with subscribers. Here we will need to design our message. Again, I told you when we're creating autoresponders, it's need to be simple and clean. However, when you run a promotion, you can definitely use one of the pre-made designs that get response created for us. I'm going to go with this one for our example. I'm just going to load it. Obviously, we have a few things to change. Let's start by changing the logo. We'll press this image with our logo and we can make it larger, just like so. Excellent. So we can change this happy birthday to happy fort. And also we can delete these paragraphs and the spacer over here. So I'm going to delete and delete again, just like so. And now I will change this cupcake image maybe to a GIF. So I'll click on the GIF option and I will look for fireworks. This one over here is really nice. Let's use it. Hopefully it will look good. And it does look good. I really like it and I will keep it that way. And now we can start working with the message body over here. I'm just going to copy the text I wrote here. Maybe these two paragraphs. Let me create an enter over here. And I will paste it here. Now, of course, I need to style it, center all the paragraphs, and maybe make the text larger, just like so. Of course, you can design it however you want. You need to add more text, etc. Feel free to play with it. I will move the button under the text. I will center it, and I will change the text to claim offer, just like so. I can also change the other parts of the button, like the background color, the border, etc. And I will drag a spacer between the paragraphs and the button, and another spacer between the share buttons to the unsubscribe links. Just like so. And I will create a larger space. Excellent. Now, one more thing that I forgot I will just link this button to our contact us section. So this is the contact us. I will copy the link of our homepage or where the contact us live. And I will add the ID of the contact us because I would like them to be redirected to this specific section as I showed you earlier. So looks good. I love it. And when you're ready, just click next. And here in the finalize screen, you can see everything you created, who going to receive this message and how the message is going to look like. When you're satisfied, click on send immediately if you would like to send it right away or click on schedule for later. Let's say 4th of July in, is in a month from now and you prepare it in advance so you can send it exactly in 4th of July. When you're ready, click send message. It will start a counter of one minute and then it will send the message. All right, we have five seconds left. And I'm supposed to get the message shortly. And I can see that it's pop up on the right side of the screen inside my inbox. Great job. So I can open it right now. And I can see the message perfectly as we styled and designed it. And when clicking on the button, it will take me to the contact us section inside the home page. Amazing job, guys, and now I can register into the class and get my free gift. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get more emails by creating pop-ups. I'm sure you already know what pop-ups are, but if you don't, let me show you a couple examples right now. So let's go to World of Watches as the first example. And when the page downloading, it will show us the pop-up to sign up to their email list and we'll get 10 dollars off whenever we signing up. That's how they getting our email. They offer us something. Another great example of a pop-up will be from the Insta page blog. And this pop-up called exit pop-up. 
because it will fire whenever we are trying to exit the website. So as I'm moving my mouse outside of the window, this pop-up will pop up and they will ask for our email in order to send us promotions and autoresponders. Great, so those are the two examples I wanted to show you. And let's go back to our WordPress dashboard in order to create our own pop-up. And we're gonna do it with Elementor as well by going to templates and then add new. We will choose the pop-up option and we will call it sign up because we would like to collect emails. To speed up the process, we will choose a pre-made design by Elementor. They have beautiful templates over here. Just browse between all of them and choose the one that you like the most. I'm gonna go with this one because it's nice and simple. After you loaded the template, we can see that we have two components. We have the section over here that holds all the content and the columns, and we have the frame behind this section. That's the pop-up. In order to edit the frame, you will need to go to the settings icon here. And this window, as you can see, pop-up settings will control the pop-up, not the content inside. So here in the layout of the pop-up settings, we can change the width and the height of the pop-up. I'm just going to adjust it to be 485 height, just like so. Looks pretty good. And we also have the option to enable or disable the overlay. The overlay is this black background behind the pop-up frame. Right now it's set to on, which is good. I recommend you to leave it that way. We can also change the animation, etc. And here under the style tab, we can change the background image of the frame. Right now it's this blue wave. We can change it to any other image that we want. Maybe this girl over here, just like so. Looks really good. Of course, we have the option to change the position of the background, but I'm gonna leave it that way. I think it's good enough. And here in the overlay, we can change the background color of the overlay behind it. Just make sure to reduce the opacity so we can see the content behind. I'm just going to leave it black because I think it was better than the purple, just like so. Excellent. And now we can move into the content itself. We can delete the guy on the bicycle, we can change the form and delete the message, just skip the email. Of course, we can go to the actions after submit section, delete the email and just hook it to get response. And here in the get response tab, I'm just going to change it to our weekly emails list. So anybody will subscribe, will get into our list and I will change the send feedback text to subscribe. Excellent. Of course, you know how to change the colors and the size and you can add elements and delete elements and do whatever you want with it. I'm pretty satisfied with the end result. I like it the way it is and we can move forward and publish it. So whenever we click on publish, we have three tabs on the left. Unlike the other ones that we only had one, we have condition, triggers and advanced rules. Let's start with conditions and we would like to display this pop up on every page. Click next and this is the triggers tab. And here you will decide what will trigger the pop-up. If you enable on page load, the pop-up will fire immediately after the page is done loading. If you will enable the on-page exit intent, the pop-up will fire whenever the user will try to exit your website, as I showed you. If you will enable both of them, the first trigger that will fire the pop-up will cancel the second trigger. So for example, right now, because it's set on page load to zero, the pop-up will fire immediately when the page is done loading and therefore it will not show again whenever the user will try to exit the page. That's good user experience. You don't want to show more than one pop-up a visit. Some other rules that you can use are on scroll. For example, if you set it up to 50%, every time the user will scroll below 50% of the page, the pop-up will fire. You also have on scroll to element and on click. So whenever somebody is clicking on an element, it will fire. All right, when you're done, click next. And here in the advanced rules tab, we have few more rules that we can set if we would like to control the way our pop-up will behave. And I will go through some of them with you guys so you will know what we are talking about. 
So the first one is show after X page views. What does it mean? Somebody is landing on your homepage, but you don't want to show it uh, on your homepage. You want him to read your content first, go to the About Us page, and maybe then go to the blog post. And then you can decide that on the third page, he will see the pop-up. So you can turn it on and set how many pages you want him to view before the pop-up will execute. The show after X sessions mean that every time your visitor is coming to your website, that's called a session. You decided that you don't want to nag him on his first visit and you want to give him the time to focus and read your stuff. However, in the second session that he will come back to revisit your website, you want to show him the pop-up. So you turn this one on and you will start showing him the pop-up from his second session. The show up to X times, it's an option that I personally use with my websites. And this option will limit how many times the pop-up will execute to a specific user. I usually set it up to be two or three times. If the user closed the pop-up more than twice while he's visiting our website, he's probably not interested to sign in up and I don't want to nag him. You have a few more options over there. The show on devices option will give you the option to hide the pop-up on certain devices. By default, the pop-up will be displayed on all of them, which is good. Then just click on save and close. Excellent. So now let's just make sure it's working properly. We'll go to our website as a visitor. And I remind you that we trigger the pop-up on page load and exit intent. We can see that immediately after the page is downloading, the pop-up fired immediately, which is good. And whenever we try to exit the website, the pop-up didn't fire because it's already fired, which is also good. We don't want to fire it twice. However, if we change the page load trigger instead of zero seconds to 60 seconds, it will fire after one minute and not immediately. The exit intent will fire before the page load if we try to exit the page before the first 60 seconds. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll go to our goodbodygym.com once again. The pop-up will not fire immediately. It's supposed to fire after 60 seconds. However, if we try to exit the page before 60 seconds, it will load before the 60 seconds, as you can see over here, and it will not load again after 60 seconds. Great job, guys. Soon enough, you'll see that your email list will be filling up with enthusiastic customers that would like to hear more about you, your service, or your products. So as I promised you guys, you learn a lot in this course, and now you have a beautiful website that you can show off and share it with your friends and customers. I would like to encourage you to keep your WordPress journey. Always come back to this course because I'm always going to update this course with the newest and the greatest materials and sources. Also, make sure to download the latest booklet because the booklet also going to be packed with great resources for your WordPress website. I would like to congratulate you guys and thank you again from the bottom of my heart for taking my course and letting me guide you how to build your website. If you have any questions, don't hesitate and contact me directly here or through my Facebook page or my sideborn.com website. Let's keep our communication going. Till the next time, I'm signing out. Thank you again and good luck.